Hello, everyone. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Scott Nurse and our entire WOSN crew. And, Scott, we take a look at both of these teams this evening, both of them coming off tough losses. The Bath Wildcats lose to New Bremen 28-0, and the Shawnee Indians lose to Crosstown rival LCC. Yeah, both of those are quality opponents. So, you know, this is an opportunity to start fresh, clean in the WBL. Both are undefeated, so it's a kind of a new season begins tonight. What's got to happen for both these teams to get an edge up tonight? Let's take a look at our keys to the game, Scott. Well, I've got three basic keys tonight. I got number one, bounce back. Both teams had losses the first week, as you mentioned, against very tough non-conference opponents on the road. Shawnee lost to LCC and Bath lost to New Bremen. Got to hit the reset button and bring the intensity from the start. This is a WBL game. Seniors must set the tone. Number two, line of scrimmage. Got to win the line of scrimmage. Bath averaged 1.7 yards per rush in game one, and Shawnee only averaged four. The team that can establish a consistent running game will be a key to winning, and it all starts in the trenches. And then third, the usual suspects. Special teams play and turnovers. They're always big. Both teams had two turnovers in week one. Got to take care of the ball. Both teams had a big kick return in week one, too, which leads to great field position and scoring opportunities. These plays are huge, emotional energizers. They get the team fired up, and, and it can carry them. Oh, absolutely. Look for the big special teams play or turnover to change the momentum for a team tonight. Absolutely. And Bath is going to kick off as Shawnee wins the toss. So Bath will kick off an absolutely gorgeous night for football here in Northwest Ohio. And a little squib kick up the middle, fielded by an up man from Shawnee. He brings it up. Great field position, Scott. They go all the way to the 43-yard line. Well, that's an interesting way to start the game for sure. Uh, it does give Shawnee pretty good field position. I'm yeah. not sure what, what, what that was all about, but... Uh, yeah, kind of, kind of odd. The, uh, the kicker uh, gave way to one of the uh, linemen, and he kind of squib kicked it up in the air. The Indians will come out on offense. They will be led by quarterback Dominic Lynch, the six foot 179 179-pound junior. Last week against LCC was 8 of 18 for 53 yards, so he's looking to get uh, better on those numbers. They'll line up in the power eye. They'll swing the ball back around to the tail. To the right side, he goes up for about a gain of about six yards. Nice off tackle run. That's number two for the Indians. Yeah, and that's what you want on your first play from scrimmage, right? You want to pick up about five, six yards, put you in, in, in good position for second down, and really the playbook's open. Cross yep. midfield. That's right. That was Jordan Banks last week against LCC. He had 71 yards, 17 carries on 71 yards. So he is the workhorse back there. This is Banks again to the left side. Gets some running room. He's up the left side. He's got one man to beat. He's at the 20. He's taken down at the 15. Jordan Banks for a run of about 40 yards. Yeah, Danny, that was just pure speed right Absolutely. there. He, he got the edge. Great job on the left side by the offensive line to hold the edge. Once he was around the corner, it was just a foot race. And, man, he took off. And you, you kind of take a look here, Scott, at what uh, Shawnee's trying to do. They're setting the tone early. They're going to play a little smash mouth football tonight. Yeah, no question about it. And it uh, looks like, though, they're, they're, they're trying to exploit that edge. The wide side of the field, both plays. And here we go for the third time. Here goes Banks again on third consecutive carry to the right side. He's got some room over there, and he's going to be taken out of bounds at about the 13-yard line. So Jordan Banks, three runs in a row, and he's got about 50 yards already, and he is proving to be the workhorse for the Shawnee Indians. Yeah, and again, uh, great first down play. You're, you're now second down and, and really less than a yard. Uh, I'm not sure if the officials are going to give uh, – give the first down or not. Uh, speaking of which, uh, let's talk about our officiating crew tonight. Absolutely. We've got uh, the referee tonight is Mark Sisko. Umpire is Marcus Zink. Line judge is Tom Sharp. Headlinesman is Preston Carr. Back judge is Craig Creamer. And the center judge is Rich Heil. And Jordan Banks takes the ball up the middle. Gets about to the 10-yard line. It's going to set up second down. We've got 11.20 to go on the Web Insurance scoreboard. Our scoreboard sponsor tonight is made possible by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lyman and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lyman and Bluffton. Web Insurance is our scoreboard sponsor. So that big offensive line right now of Shandon Sewell, Alton Clayton, Preston Coppler, Cole Marshall, and Champ Kaiser. Always like to give the big guys up front a little credit, Scott. Yeah, no question. So Dominic Lynch will go under center. He's got Banks in the backfield. He swings it back to Banks. Banks runs into his own man, and he is going to be taken down for a loss. And that play was doomed from the start, Scott, as soon as uh, it looked like a misalignment by the Indians. Yeah, it looked like a misassignment for sure. There were there were two or three white jerseys right there. It's a little bit hard to read their numbers on that yeah, side yeah, because the sun's shining and, and the, the light blue on the white. But uh, 
There were about three guys there that met Jordan right at the line of scrimmage, and, and he didn't pick up much, if any. A, a absolutely beautiful facility out here, Shawnee. They've got the new turf down. This is their first game, and they've got to be really super proud of this place because well, it looks fantastic. Yeah, and you know they want to score first, oh, right? absolutely. In the new stadium, <laughs> we, they want to score. That's right. Dominic Lynch throws the ball and goes over the head of his receiver. He was looked like he was targeting number 10 for the Indians. And that is Keegan Wilson, the split in, the 5'9", 155-pound senior, just outside of his reach. So that'll bring up fourth down. Let's see what the Indians do here. They elect to try a field goal. Yeah, nice coverage on that play by Cody Vandemark from Bath. Uh, senior, 5'11", 165-pound defensive back. And they'll trot out Tyler Kimmel as he'll try to tack three on the board for the Indians. 10, 13 to go here on the Web Insurance scoreboard. So you got to be happy for Bath. They, they hold their ground and they don't give up the big play. Yeah, good job uh, defensively. And after the struggles they had last week, they gave up a lot of yardage, and they gave up 28 points last week. So you know they're a little pride on the line here. So Tyler Kimmel will line up for a shot at a, about a 32-33 yarder. Snap is back. Hold is good. Kick is up, and it is good. And that'll put the Indians on the board first. They take a 3-0 lead. Shawnee High School. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Welcome back to Shawnee High School. We're on the Web Insurance Scoreboard. The Indians have taken the quick 3-0 lead. Scott, during the uh, commercial break, uh, brought up a great point. Tyler Kimmel will go down in the history book. Yeah, <laughs> he's going to go down as the first one to score any points here in the uh, on the new turf. Tyler Kimmett, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I called him Kimmett. Kimmett? With, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, with about a, what was it, about a 12-yard yeah. field goal. Yeah. <laughs> so he gets on the board for the Indians. So Bath gets their turn, and Shawnee's going to kick it deep here. There's the kick. Nice, nice driving kick back to about the five-yard line, fielded by the Bath receiver. Brings it up. That's number 17 for Bath. But Skyler Lehman, the six foot 165 pound, or 160 pound junior, and the Wildcats will take over at about the 26 yard line. So last week, Bath really struggled, Scott, against New Bremen, gave up 28 points, did not score a touchdown. Uh, Kane Sullivan was 8 of 22 for 78 yards, uh, struggled a little bit offensively, but uh, they're hoping to you know, ride the ship this week. Well, as I mentioned, 1.7 yards per rush. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you, you know, you really got to establish the rush, otherwise you're... You're, you're one-dimensional, yeah. And, yeah. and you resort to the passing game, and That's you're right. being chased everywhere. So really, they need to establish that line of scrimmage, Get, get a little bit of run going, and then that will open up the pass game. That's a great point. So, Kane's, Kane's, or I'm sorry, uh, Kane Sullivan will be in the shotgun. He's got two to the right. He throws the ball to the right side. It's connected with his receiver. Tries to make a little room. Gets about nine yards. So, a great pitch and catch for the Wildcats. That's Cody Vandemark, the 5'11", 165-pound senior, makes the catch and moves the ball up to about the 35-yard line. Yeah, and I really like that play a lot. You see a lot of teams do that. Yeah. I really like that. It's a quick, high-percentage pass play. Get your athletes out into space. One or two misses, and they're gone. So Sullivan hands the ball up the middle. He takes it up to the 45-yard line. That's a Bath Wildcat first down. So a nice quick hitter by the Wildcats as they are trying to establish that run. And they're going to a quick offense here. They're not huddling up. They're calling the play from the sideline. So <clears throat> Kane Sullivan will go in the shotgun. He's got trips to his left. He's got one receiver wide to the right, and he's got a single set back. Sullivan takes the ball and hands the ball off to the middle. And he's quickly taken down. Nice job by the Shawnee defensive line. That was number 22 for Bath. That was Keaton Vernon with the carry. Yeah, Keaton had four attempts last week, eight total yards for an average of two. Picked up about two on that one. Sullivan's in the shotgun. He's got trips to the left. He's got two to the right and a single setback. He's in the shotgun. The ball comes back to Sullivan. He rolls to his right, looking up the field. He's going to take it himself. He's going to go out of bounds for a game of about five yards. It's going to bring up third and five. Danny Holbrook, Scott Nurse from Shawnee High School on an absolutely beautiful night and a beautiful facility, brand new turf, and they've got to be tickled pink about this facility because it, uh, it looks fantastic. It looks beautiful. I mean, it's amazing to me how many high schools now have turf oh, fields. isn't but, it? Yeah. But it, it, it seems like... With each new field, it gets a little bit better. <laughs> yes, you know? it does. You're right. And this one just pops. The red and the black, it just, it, oh, my goodness. It is gorgeous. Yeah, the logo is fantastic. Oh, it sure is. 
So Solomon's in the gun again. He's got trips to the left. He's got one single to the right. He's going to throw to his left side. Oh, just that. That could have been a disaster as the Shawnee defensive back came up. They make the play for an incompletion. Yeah, I think a little bit of a miscommunication there for sure. I think that was intended for Cody Vandemark, number two, but he was blocking, and uh, the Shawnee defender was, was right there. Could have picked that off. Our first down sponsor tonight is Union Bank. Union Bank is our first down sponsor. Union Bank is committed to you, so they will go into punt formation. And this looks like Zach Welsh on the punt for Bath. It's a high spiral. Takes a really nice Bath bounce. It's going to go down inside the 10-yard line, about the five-yard line. So the Wildcats do a terrific job of pinning the Indians deep. And that's where they'll take over from about the five-yard line. So. Drive stalled. Bath did some good things, Scott. They moved the ball through the air. They ran the ball well, so we'll see what happens here. Yeah, I think a real good job of field position there. They 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 rallied defensively to keep Shawnee from scoring a touchdown, only gave up three points, and then moved the ball down the football field. It's pinned it pretty deep now. Yeah, and, and that's a great point, Scott, because how many teams early in the season would have maybe tried to go for it on fourth down, but the, the smart call is to pin him deep, and it worked out fantastic for the Wildcats. Yeah, it did. Uh, it did, for sure. Keegan Wilson and Chase Beery were back there to receive the punt, and it just sailed over their heads. So Dominic Lynch will take the ball and hand the ball back to Banks, and Banks is quickly taken down. So great job of penetration by that Bath defensive line. Well, I think that's an opportunity defensively because you know chances are when you're in the shadow of your own end zone, typically you're going to run the right, football. Right, right. You're not going to risk yep. a, a safety, and so uh, you can kind of key on those run, run keys and, and fill the gaps, and, and Bath did a good job on that play. Really nice crowd out here tonight. The bath side's pretty full, and the Shawnee home side's very full. So it was a lot warmer last week. We, uh, we were in Spencerville for Spencerville Light, and boy, the temperatures were 10, 15 degrees warmer. This is a nice, cool night. So Dominic Lynch is under center. Jordan Banks is in the backfield. Lynch is going to roll to his right. He's looking downfield, throws to the sideline, almost picked off. Wow. Little collision there, targeted for number 10, Keegan Wilson, and a great job of the bath defense. Yeah, that was number uh, 17 for Bath on the defense. Skyler Lehman, he's a junior, six foot, 160 pounds. Textbook, That's the textbook, man. reached up with his inside hand, knocked the f football away. Great, six foot for a defensive back is yeah. great size, especially at this level. So, so here come the Indians. We're at third and 10 with 7.47 to go on the Web Insurance scoreboard. Dominic Lynch is under center. He's going to roll to his right, looking downfield. He's got, gonna, he's got a man wide open. He makes the reception. He's at the 40. He's got one man to beat. He's at the 20, to the 15, to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Indians! What a strike! He finds Keegan Wilson sprinting down the right side, and he connects for six, and the Indians go up 9-0 on the Web Insurance scoreboard. Well, never mind what I said about throwing in the uh, shadows of your end zone. Uh, what, what a great play. Great placement uh, of the football on the pass. It uh, caught, oh, caught him right in goodness. stride. And uh, he played a little cat and mouse there right around the 40-yard line and was able to pull away for the touchdown. Yeah, one rule of working with me, Scott, don't make predictions. <laughs> Nothing ever goes like we want it to. <laughs> so the Indians on a huge play take a 9 nothing lead, try to get this extra point tapped on, and the home crowd is ecstatic right now. The snap is back. The hold is good. The kick is up. And the Indians have taken a 10-0 lead. With 7.33 to go here until the end of the first quarter, the Shawnee Indians 10, the Bath Wildcats nothing. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Welcome back to Shawnee High School, where the Indians have taken a 10-0 lead on the Web Insurance scoreboard. A pitch and catch from Dominic Lynch to Keegan Wilson as he just outran everybody down the right side. Catches the ball at about the 35, Scott, and just outran everybody. Yeah, absolutely. And, and when you talk about, we talked about keys to the game at the top of the broadcast. Absolutely. One is, uh, number one key is bounce back. Not only from last week, but from plays like sure. this. You know, you tend to, uh, Shawnee score twice now. You tend to get down a little bit and uh, you really got to stay focused and, and bounce back. So here come the Wildcats as they field the ball, and they get up to about the 37-yard line, so great field position. That's where the Wildcats start. The thing I'm noticing right now, and I know we're early, Scott, but 
the team speed right now from the Shawnee Indians is really, really impressive. So about the 37 yard line is where the Bath Wildcats will start out. My partner's killing animals over here in the booth. <laughs> well, there was a bee uh, that was uh, harassing us and, and former athletic director, Dick Heath down here. I don't, don't want him to get stung. Right. No, I, you, I like, want, yeah. I, I, you know, they always treat me well here at Shawnee. So. <laughs> We're a guest <laughs> of Coach Heath's here in the building, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so the Wildcats will take over about the 37 yard line. And that's where quarterback Kane Solomon's in the gun. He's got a single set back. He's got trips to the right, one to the left. He'll hand the ball off, and he absolutely tripped over number seven. Skyler Lehman gets the handoff and tripped over Kane Solomon. So a bad play all the way around, and they take a loss of about four yards. Yeah, that hurts. Especially on first down, Scott. You just really have a hard – you know, first and second down, you've got to get yourself in a position to convert that third down, and now you're behind the chains at second and about 14. Well, I mean, that's, uh, you know, that quarterback to the, the whatever the running back yes, is, yeah. that exchange is so important, and, and it happens. It's hard. Yeah. Sullivan fires the ball to the right side, gets it back up to the original uh, line of scrimmage. That pass was number five, Blaine Albright, the 6'3", 205-pound senior. And they've got some size out there at the wideout for Bath. You look at Albright at 6'3", Cody Vandemark at 5'11", Skylar Lehman at 6 foot, Vinny Vendetta at 6'1". So they've got some big kids out there to throw the ball to. Yeah, and I like Sullivan's arms. He, so do he, I. He, he, he does a nice job, doesn't he? Yeah, that was a rocket, that last throw. Uh, we've got uh, look like one of the receivers on the close here to the booth jumped off sides, and that's exactly what they're going to call. So that'll set him back five yards. So one positive, two negatives, and get Bath just keeps continuing to make those mistakes, and that can't make <clears throat> Coach Rendell very happy at this time. No, those are uh, you know those are those those uh, usual suspects. You know, yes, we talk about right. turnovers, special teams, penalties. Yeah, absolutely. You got to avoid those. Those are drive killers. It's now third and 15 instead of maybe third and seven. So here comes Sullivan. He's in the gun. He's got trips to his left. He's got a single set back and another. F it looks like, oh, that's like Shawnee's going to take a timeout. Well, they're going to take a timeout on the field. We're going to take a timeout here in the booth with 6.16 to go on the Web Insurance scoreboard. Shawnee leads Bath 10-0. Welcome back to Shawnee Stadium. 6.16 to go. The Indians lead Bath Wildcats 10 to nothing. Danny Holbrook, Scott Nurse from Shawnee High School. Bath taking the ball at about the 32-yard line. A couple plays where they went backwards here. Third and 14. Kane Sullivan's in the gun. He's got two to the right, two to the left. Single setback. Sullivan's going to go to his left. Looks to get out of the way coverage. He's being chased. Throws it to the sidelines, and it's picked off. Picked off by number 21 for the Indians. And that's Julian Makeley, the 6'145 pound senior. Yeah, I think uh, I think he landed out of bounds, okay, so they're okay. going to rule that incomplete. But uh, still, same, same effect. Absolutely. Basically, uh, although now Bath will have the opportunity to punt, maybe gain some yards and field position that way. So Bath will bring out the punt team. This will be Zach Welsh. Is he. Uh, Really that, did a nice job of the last punt, getting pinning them deep. But. That's really a difficult throw when the quarterback's, uh, you know, boot, booting to the left and he's a right-handed thrower. It's real tough, yeah. That ball goes out of bounds at about the 45-yard line. That's where Shawnee will take over. So they gained about uh, 10 or 12 yards rather than the interception. Sure. sure. So you take a look at Bath's offensive struggles, and it just seems like it continues from last week, Scott. And, and, and they're, they're trying to move the ball through the air, but, uh, you know, they're just making those penalties up front. It's really hurting their offense. Well, last week they had four penalties, 25 yards in penalties, and then, um, you know, a couple of turnovers. And when you couple that stuff together, sure. it really is uh, difficult to maintain and sustain a drive. So, you know, something that they're working on, I'm sure, um, and and it, it, it hasn't looked good so far in this game, but, you know, anything can happen. So That's why they play four quarters. That's right. Here's Dominic Lynch as he struggles to or get a ball out and throws it behind the line of scrimmage, almost taken down by big number 58, Quentin Collins, the 6'1", 265-pound junior, almost takes Lynch down. It's kind of like when I hit my driver into the woods, you know? <laughs> You, yes. you, you try you try to make the great shot to get out of there when really you should just pitch out into the fairway and go from there, give it up. You know, that situation there, um, you know, probably should have just tucked the ball and taken the loss instead of trying to make right. that play. A right. lot of times those kind of plays can lead to 
really devastating results. Absolutely. So Lynch. But that comes with experience. Under center, he's got Jordan Banks behind him. He's going to hand the ball off to the up man. They're going to push the ball up the middle of the field for a gain of about four yards. See who we got on that carry. Number six for the Indians. That's Garrett Looney. Now they've got Garrett Looney listed as a tight end, but they've also got Jordan Banks listed as a fullback. And if he's a fullback, that's the fastest fullback I've ever seen. Yeah, I think uh, it's just the offense yeah. that they run, that uh, spread offense, as they've got them lined up in different positions and different places. Well, it absolutely has Bath back on its heels, and it's keeping them guessing. So here come the Indians with 520 to go on the Web Insurance scoreboard, third and six. Dominic Lynch is in the gun. He's got two to the left. He's got a single set back. He's going to throw the ball to his left side. He's got a man out there, and they may have picked up the first down, Scott. A great effort by the receiver there. Well, again, that's that play, that quick hitter out, you know, quick pass out into space, allow your receiver to be athletic, find a little seam. He was able to do that, pick up just enough for a first down. Number 23, Jaden Wheeler with the outstanding effort to pick up the first down. And, boy, you can tell they really want this one bad, Scott, because they're playing really hard right now. Yeah, no question about it. Jaden had one reception last week. He's got one already this week. So they'll pitch the ball back to Banks as he tries to get around the edge, and he's going to be taken back into the middle of the line. And a great job of the defensive end from Bath to stay home and keep him contained, pushing him back towards the tackles. And a great job by the Bath defensive line. So that'll bring up second and about eight. Jordan Banks gets a two-yard carry on that one. Yeah, it looked like number 68 was in there for, uh, for Bath. Our touchdown sponsor tonight is Fat Jack's. Touchdowns are sponsored by Fat Jack's Pizza. Get to Fat Jack's Pizza before or after the game and enjoy their delicious pizza, fun games, and ice cold drinks. Fat Jack's Pizza is our touchdown sponsor. Shawnee will line up. Dominic Lynch will go under center. He's got a single set back. One to the left, two to the right. He's going to throw the ball to the right side. Reception's made out there at about the 40, and he'll take it up to the 35. That's number 21 for the Indians. That's Julian Makeley. He makes another reception. So they just continue to push them. And they're really smart plays, Scott. They're just little dump passes of two and three yards, and he's letting his athletes get out in space, and I really like that offensive concept. Yeah, I do too. It's a high percentage completion yep. for the quarterback, very little risk because uh, typically that receiver is a couple yards off the ball, so the defender is, you know, uh, eight, yes, ten right. yards away. So it's a high percentage pass. Very little bad can happen. Yep. So Bath is going to take a timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout here in the booth with 3.27 to go on the Web Insurance scoreboard. The Indians lead the Wildcats 10-0. You're watching high school football on WOSN. We're back here at Shawnee High School with 3.27 to go on the Web Insurance scoreboard. The Indians lead the Wildcats 10-0. And, and Scott, you take a look. Last week, uh, Bath defensively gave up 275 rushing yards, only gave up 80 yards passing. And wow, this week, the Indians are really exploiting that defensive secondary. They're really moving the ball through the air. Well, you know, take away that 90-yard that right. pass play, and really what you got are, are modified pitches. Yep. They're, they're quick hit That's passes out to the edge. and. And so they're almost extended handoffs. That's a great point, Scott. And that's another Union Bank first down. Union Bank is committed to you. Union Bank is our first down sponsor. So Jordan Banks carrying the load tonight. With 3.13 to go, Danny Holbrook, Scott Nurse from Shawnee High School on an absolutely gorgeous Friday night. Week two of the high school slate here in the state of Ohio. Dominic Lynch is under center. He throws the ball to the left, and that's incomplete. And... I think he heard footsteps on that one because he was wide open. Yeah, no question about it. He tried to uh, he turn. You could see, almost see his head turn <laughs> yes, as he's right. trying to catch the football. And, uh, you know, that's a recipe for a for a missed pass. But Chase Beery on that incompletion, number five, the 5'11", 199-pound <clears throat> senior for the Indians. I think Coach Reindell has to find an answer defensively. On the, for, for Bath. Sure. I mean, I, I think that's really the key. The offense uh, will go, I think, as the defense goes. Yeah. Lynch is under center. He's going to hand the ball to, Don, or to Jordan Banks, and Banks goes up the middle. 
And it's really hard, Scott, to get pressure on Lynch because his it's just it's a three-step drop and he's throwing the ball. And well, if he's in the gun, he's not even stepping back. He's just throwing to the side. Well, and I got to give Cooper some credit here. It's good coaching. Oh, absolutely. Bath is running a five-two defense, so they've got five down linemen. So if you can get outside, you're going to make some hay. You, yep. you, you, there are very few defensive players physically out on the edge of the football. So if you can get to the edge and do that quickly with a pass. Uh, you got a good chance for a successful play. So Lynch will come under center. He's got two to the right, one to the left, and now a single step back. He's going to roll to the right side. He looks over the field. Ball's tipped, and it's caught. The ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage, and it's caught by number 45, Akaius Richardson, the 5'9", 245-pound sophomore. And uh, <laughs> nice concentration by Richardson. Well, that play Bath went to a 4-3 defense and they had a linebacker out there. He was able to get a hand on it and uh, it made a good play. It just uh, fell right into the arms of the receiver. And, and so Shawnee picks up some yards there. Now it's fourth and about three. What do you do? You, you, you got to go for it. I, I'm, oh, yeah. I'm not sure that we have a 40-plus yard field goal kicker. Right, right. I think you're right. And so uh, Shawnee will hurry to the line. Lynch gets under center. Play clock at two. Let's see if they uh, timeout. They're going to take the time. Well, they're going to take the, the the penalty here, or did they get the timeout? They got the timeout. Okay, they got the timeout. So we'll take a timeout here in the booth with 2:15 to go. The Shawnee Indians lead the Bath Wildcats 10 nothing. Tonight's timeout sponsor is Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Visit Metzger'sFinancialServices.com. Metzger's Financial Services is our timeout sponsor. Danny, I think this might be the play of the game right here because this, uh, I think this, you're right. could, this could turn the game, really, if Bath can get a stop here. Oh, they're gonna, you know what? The center moved before the ball was hiked, and that's going to make it about a fourth and eight, and is that going to change Coach Cooper's? Yeah, he's bringing on, it looks like, I don't know if they're going to they punt the ball here, possibly. Right. Yeah, they may do a quick quick kick here. Yeah, the, and Bath doesn't even have any, but they're going to try a, are you kidding me? They're going to try a 45-yard field goal, 46-yard field goal. They are trotting out. We got the official stop play. I think there's a uh, equipment failure. Yeah, they're going to they're bring Tyler Kimmon out for a 46-yard field goal. Wow. So let's see if this young man has the leg for this. Snap is good. And, and, and looks like another penalty or, yeah, they're going to say delay or false start. So uh, that's going to change everything, and Coach Cooper is not happy about that. Now, it, it's interesting because if I'm Bath, I'm not so sure if I would take this because what happens if they take that penalty, it puts Shawnee in a position where they can actually punt the ball now and really yeah. pin him deep. That's a great point, Scott. You that know, it's, a, it's an interesting decision. I'm not sure that Coach and, Cooper didn't do that intentionally. Yeah. Take the penalty, move them back. See, now they're going to punt it, and yeah. you've got your punt returner standing inside the 10-yard line. Yeah, so a difficult uh, task here for Bath as uh, Shawnee will bring the punt team out, and they intend to pin the Wildcats deep with 2.14 to go on the Web Insurance scoreboard. Snap is back, and he catches it on the bounce, and he goes to the corner. And what a turn. Oh, and oh. it rolls into the end zone. I thought it was going to go out of bounds, Scott, but it rolls into the end zone, and Bath got a huge break. Well, you know, sometimes the football bounces your way. <laughs> That's right. And that one definitely did. Scott, did you uh, get a chance to watch many games last week, some of your observations from week one? We had a lot of, you know, obviously – uh, you know, such as baseball, how the pitch or the offense has to catch up with pitching, and, and in high school football, it seems like the uh, defense has to catch up with the offense. Well, I was down at Marion Local, and I saw Marion Local well, and they play pretty good football, uh, yeah. they, they, <laughs> they play great football, and uh, you know, it was interesting. You're exactly right. Defense was tough. The offense got yeah. going second half. Wapakoneta 
is a force to be reckoned with. Absolutely. They, they are a, a, an outstanding football team. So both of those were really good football teams and, and had things moving in a pretty good direction. So I like both of those teams. So Kane Solomon will bring, bring the Cats out. He's in the gun. He keeps the ball himself. He's going to go up the middle. Gets a gain of about three yards. Yeah, I was down in uh, Spencerville. I had Spencerville Elida. And, and I'll tell you, Scott, Elida's got a really nice team this year. They've got some freshmen that are really contributing. And they've got a young man on that defensive line by the name of Parker Krim. 6'2", 220 pounds. And I, and I nicknamed him the Krim Reaper. <laughs> he just was in the backfield all night. Wow. <laughs> Wow. You know, it, it's sometimes it's hard to tell in week one yep, when you're yep. playing, you know, some of the bigger schools or playing smaller schools. Yep, you're and right. Oh, that could have been a disaster. Solomon throws to the intended target. Number two, that's Cody Vandemark. The ball goes off his shoulder pads, and the defensive back came up and almost made an interception. Yeah, great play defensively on that side of the field. So, again, Bath is in third and long, third and seven with 133 to go. So, Mistake after mistake, the Wildcats trying to make something positive happen. So Sullivan in the gun. He's got two to the left, one to the right. He's got a single setback. He's got the tight end just off the line. I want to give credit. I think that was Wyatt Morgan on that last breakup for Shawnee. There's the snap. Sullivan looks across the middle. He goes off to the left, looking for receiver. Throws the ball deep down the sideline. He's going to throw it out of bounds. And that's going to bring up fourth down. Danny, I was watching all the receivers. There are four receivers out. Three were deep, and one was kind of a shallow cross. And all four were covered like blankets. Yeah, there, there, there was no, no openings whatsoever. So smart play to throw it out of bounds. But... Uh, credit the defensive backs for Shawnee. Those defensive backs, and we've mentioned them before, Dominic Lynch, Keegan Wilson, Ben Bullock, and Julian Makeley doing a great job in the backfield stopping the passing attack of the Wildcats. So here come the Wildcats as they punt the ball. Nice punt, gets it across the 50-yard line, taking a bath bounce, but it's picked up. There's another flag on the play, so we continue to have mistakes on the plays. And let's see who this goes against. Or maybe Wait. they just threw the ball marker down. I, I thought it was a, a flag, but it looks like maybe just the ball marker. Kind of yeah, down. now the uh, the ball markers are bright orange, yes. so it's, uh, you know. And as old as and, I get, you know. Well, <laughs> you know, with the sun shining and everything, it's sometimes hard to tell. Is, was that a flag or a, right. thank or you a beanie? For, yeah, thank you for making excuses. I got you. Me. I got your back. <laughs> 117 to go here. The Indians up 10 nothing, looking to tack on more here before the end of the first quarter. Well, you know, I got to say, at least Bath, uh, you know, Shawnee was down in, in into the red zone almost. Right. And, and they were able to hold, get the ball, a couple penalties push Shawnee back out of field goal range. And so uh, they were able to hold. They didn't get much offense, but now the field position has changed. So, um, you know, I got to consider that a little bit sure, of a absolutely. victory. Yeah. Because uh, had Shawnee scored 17-0. That would have been yeah, yeah, that, that, that's That's a pretty big number to overcome. So the ball comes out to the left side. Here comes the tailback for Shawnee. He's got it up the right side. This is number five for the Indians. Chase Berry, the 5'11", 199-pound senior, and he picks up about 35-yard line. So a great in-and-out play as he comes across the face of the Shawnee offensive line. And we're going to have a holding call, it looks like to me. And Coach Cooper is not happy. Oh, he's very animated, folks. It's an illegal procedure. False start, maybe. Yep, false start. Yeah, he gets pretty fired up. <laughs> I, I've known him for a long time, and uh, what a great hum human being he is. But, man, he gets fired up. And, <laughs> well, uh, yeah. and I love it. You know, I, I, the, If you don't have passion about high school oh. football, then you shouldn't be coaching. Look, so look, I, I think yeah. that's... The guy's been doing it a long time. He knows exactly what he's doing. And, uh, hey, he's even a commissioner of a league here. <laughs> he's the NWCC commissioner. So. Well, and he's also, you know, when you think about it, um, you know, he's invested. He's, sure, he's taught sure. these kids. He taught them whatever that uh, formation was that they called. Right. You know, so he, he's invested. So Lynch is under center. He rolls to his right, looks down the field, under heavy pressure. He gets the get rid of the ball. And, oh, almost a fantastic catch by number six, Garrett Looney, as it just falls off of his arms. And a great job of making something happen by Lynch. And Lynch is doing a really nice job of creating some space back there because he's under a lot of pressure. Yeah, that was a great touch pass. I mean, over the defensive backs and just kind of dropped it in and uh, couldn't quite connect, but it was a... Great touch. So 103 to go here in the first quarter. The Indians lead 10-0 on the Web Insurance scoreboard. Danny Holbrook, Scott Nurse from 
Shawnee High School on a beautiful Friday night. Brand new turf field, and the home crowd is fired up. It's second 15 now here if you're Bath. Just, just be solid. Just be solid. Lynch rolls to his right, throws the ball out. And a nice open field tackle by number two for the Wildcats, Cody Vandemark. And that is a great call, Scott, by you because now it puts him at third and 15. Yeah, and, and, and that was just a solid play. He read, he read what was happening, kind of froze for a second, read what was happening, and then came up, broke down, and just was fundamental, made the tackle. Yeah, and now you're seeing the chess match, Scott, because the Bath defensive backs are coming up and playing a little bump coverage, and they're forcing uh, the Shawnee offense to go down the field. Right, and you got to be careful a little bit there because one little pump fakes oh, on yeah. the outside, and, and you've got somebody deep. But, but uh, yeah, I do like that. So here comes Dominic Lynch at third and 18 as he goes under center. He's got Jordan Banks in the backfield. He's got two to the left and one to the right. He observes the field, looks for his man going across the middle. He's got a man out there. Takes the ball across the middle and almost breaks it for a big game. He's going to take it across midfield. That yeah, it's going to be 10. about fourth and two, and now you got a decision to make. You're at midfield. Do you go for it? Well, I know or what do I you do. Punt it deep? <laughs> I know what I do, but I'm not Coach Cooper. So. <laughs> and that's going to end the first quarter. And after one quarter from Shawnee High School, the Indians lead the Bath Wildcats 10 to nothing. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Second quarter just about to go underway here from Shawnee High School. Danny Hilbert, Scott Nurse, as the Shawnee Indians lead the Bath Wildcats 10-0 after one quarter. So all Shawnee in the first quarter, Scott, and they're on the move again. Well, and uh, Coach Cooper had a little extra time with the quarter break there to make his decision. He's going for it. Fourth and three, Lynch is under center. He's got Banks in the backfield. He's got one to the right, two to the left. The tight end is just off the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and if you're here, he might be trying for a... Uh, for an offsides by the defense. Hard count. I was gonna say then Lynch See if he can pull him, yep. it's inside five yards. They're not moving. Yeah, the play clock's down to five. Yeah, I think he'll take the penalty and punt it away. Yep. So a nice job there by the Indians to try to pull them off. Great discipline by Bath as their kids did not flinch. So the punt team will come on for Shawnee. So, and you know, after a rough start, Bath has held their own. They just need to get something going offensively. Yeah, and I'm guessing Coach Rindle you know, talk to his guys sure. in that quarter break and said, hey, listen, you know, if they go hard count, just be be disciplined, and Bath was. And you're right, they, they you know, had a couple of plays go against them. They're down 10-0, but if they can get a score on the board before it's half, then then it's a new game. whole new ball game. So they've got Cody Vandemark back deep for the Bath Wildcats, along with Skylar Lehman. So two deep threats back there in the back, and they've got a little speed between both of those young men. You know, it's hard you receiving the punt into the sun. You really got to keep your eye on it. Oh, there's a fantastic punt. So this will be <clears throat> Cody Vandemark as he tries to move the ball in on great job by special teams coverage for the Shawnee Indians. You know what? I don't know if you ever stood back and caught punts, but I've tried to, and, 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 and that's an art. I mean, oh, it's yeah. incredible. The ball is knuckling, and it's spinning, and it's coming out of the air, and you're looking into the sun, and, uh, and, and meanwhile, you've got – all these, you know, herd of players. They want to kill you. you. Yeah, it's a really difficult thing. And, uh, you know, so Cody did a nice job, in he my sure opinion, did. back there, because right now where the sun's at, it's shining directly into their helmets. Absolutely. So Kane Sullivan will bring the Wildcats out. He's in the shotgun. He's got two to the right, two to the left. He's got a single set back. He gets the snap, hands the ball to the first back through, gets up the yards for about through two to three yards. Tough yardage, maybe two yards at the most. Great job by the Shawnee defensive line. That Shawnee defensive line, like I said, a Caius Richardson champ, Kaiser Carter Fay, and Shannon Sewell up yeah. on top of that one. I was just going to mention those guys. Yeah, they, <laughs> they've done a good job early on plugging up the inside. So here comes Solomon as he brings his troops up. Second and eight. 11.22 to go here in the second quarter. This is Solomon. He's going to keep his own number. Gets out to the left side. Almost gets a block. He does get a block on the side, and he's going to pick up a Union Bank first down. So you just see the receiver for Bath. He, he started to hold the defender and pulls his hands back. And a great job by that man. And that gets the Bath Wildcats another first down. Well, Shawnee's in that 4-3 defense. They had a linebacker out there. And, and he, he just gave him a little shake to the inside, made him commit, and that allowed him to get to the edge and pick up the extra yards he needed to get the first down. So here comes Bath at about the 
39-yard line. This is Kane Solomon in the gun. He hands the ball to the first man through, and he is taken down by just a slew of Indians as they do a great job of closing that gap off. That's number. <clears throat> Yeah, Shawnee's got seven, sometimes eight guys in the box there, so that, that running up the middle is going to be very difficult for Bath. And Shandon Sewell, number 63, the 5'10", 245-pound senior, is just a load in there for that Bath offensive line to handle. Yeah, Shawnee's got some size, no question. You know, Scott, how tough is it being the second game of the year, being a WBL game? I mean, this is really big time, and you mentioned it earlier. It, it is, this is huge. You want to start off that league play 1-0. and Well, yeah, and not only that, but you want to start your season off 1-1 sure, right. as opposed to 0-2. Oh, it, it's a big mental hurdle there. So here's the screen play by Bath as they get a nice play. And, boy, number 22 for Bath, Keaton Vernon. He was hit hard by the defensive back from Shawnee, and we've got a player down. So we've got an injury on the field. We're going to let them take care of that young man, and we'll step aside here with 10.52 to go. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Welcome back. The injured player for Shawnee was Shannon Sewell, the big defensive tackle. He appears to be okay. They've got him on the sideline taking a look at him, but he did come off the field on his own power. So here come the Wildcats as they hand the ball off, and there's a flag at the line of scrimmage, and that's probably going to be holding on that Bath offensive line. We'll have to, oh, no, we've got a false start. So that's the third false start tonight. You tend to see those early in the season, Scott. Yeah, well, you know, and, and, and you're trying to make a play, yeah. right? So your that's adrenaline's right. pumping. If you're an offensive lineman, you want to you want to fire out. Um, you want to attack your block. And so you, they hear the voice. They hear the command. And uh, sometimes it's difficult to hold, especially if the count's like on two or three or something. So you take a look from last week. The Indians gave up 375 yards to the LCC offense, and that did not set well with Coach Cooper. Well, LCC is good. Yeah, they are. Absolutely, and, and, absolutely. And, 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 you know, Coach Coop coached at LCC. Sure. So, so that's, uh, you know, that may, that's like salt in the wound. Oh, that's, absolutely. That's very difficult for him to take, and he's very competitive yeah. and uh, a good coach. So, yeah, he's, uh, he's going to react and respond. I would expect him to. I talked to one of the administrators here, and they said that uh, last weekend's practices were pretty rough for the Shawnee Indians. So uh, these kids are really responding. And that's the, that's the sign of a great coach and, and, and the team, the kids that buy into the program. And you can tell they're buying into Coach Coop. Well, and they had an extra day of practice, honestly, sure, yeah. because they played that opener on Thursday night. So they had the extra day of practice that, uh, you know, between the games, the, most of the other teams in this area didn't. Absolutely. You're right, that was a Thursday night game and they had to watch the rest of the Northwest Ohio play Friday night knowing they could not get back on the win track until this following week. So right. that's a great point. So, so two runs for the uh, Wildcats as they get back to uh, about the 40 yard line. So that's gonna bring up third and five. So a manageable third down by the Wildcats with 9.18 to go here until halftime. Indians lead 10 nothing. Danny Hilbert, Scott Nurse from Shawnee High School. And if you're Bath, you really want to pick this first down up. Absolutely. So Kane Sullivan is in the gun. He's got trips to his right. He's got a single setback, and he bobbles the snap and goes down. Wow, what a disaster for Kane Sullivan and the Wildcats. As the snap was high, he tried to corral it in. It went off the turf. He did pick it back up, but eventually went straight down and took the loss. Yeah, that's a smart play. I mean, it, it, defenders were coming. you got to get secure the ball and get down. And look, if you're Bath, you, you just tell your kids, look, we didn't turn the ball over. We're going to pin them deep and let our defense play. And so far, so good for the Bath defense. Well, as I mentioned, 10 points is not no, a deficit no, no, you, that you can't overcome with a couple plays. That's right. So Bath is in the punt formation. Zach Welsh on to punt and gets it. Fair catch called at about the 35-yard line. That was number 10, Keegan Wilson, as he gets the fair catch. And that's where the Shawnee Indians will take over with 8.22 to go. Our scoreboard sponsor tonight is Web Insurance. Web Insurance Agency serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Now, you know, partner, in about six, seven weeks, we're going to be bundled up and Wanting to know why it's not warm out and why is it raining all the time? Right, we got the windows open here, yeah, a nice right. little breeze. Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's a really a perfect night for oh, football. They took care of it. Probably us. a little warm still yeah. for the players, but sure. perfect for us. Perfect for us, and 
Got the windows open. They've served pizza to us and drinks, and it's a real nice night here. So here comes Dominic Lynch and the Indians. He'll hand the ball off to Jordan Banks. He goes off left tackle. It's a little uh, seam there, excuse me. Goes up to about the 30-yard line. He is shifty when he gets between the tackles. Well, he's super quick, and, and you're right. He's shifty, and, and he's got speed to burn. My question, my concern with him is he's not particularly big. No, he's not. You're right. So when you're talking about a WBL schedule that includes teams like Ottawa Glandorf sure. and Elida and, 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 and Bath and Wapak, <laughs> yeah. and, you know, the, these are teams with, with pretty good-sized players. Uh, you know, is he going to be durable enough to last the whole season? So here comes Lynch or Banks again, picking up some tough yardage, and he gets up to about the 36-yard line, and he's going to be about three yards short of the first down. So they are continuing to run Jordan Banks off tackle. He's picking up tough yards. You're right. He goes about 155 pounds, Scott. So you're right. He's not real big. Yeah, and he's kind of wiry, but he just, uh, hey, he just answered my question right there. He uh, yeah, met absolutely. a couple couple Bath defenders and uh, drove right through him. So he picks up another Union Bank first down. So. Yeah, I mean, it's hard it's hard to gauge a player like that. You can't gauge their heart absolutely. by the size of uh, the player because, uh, you know, if he's a fighter, he, he a lot of times that's that's what it takes. I like, I like what he's doing so far. So Lynch is under center. He's got Banks in the backfield. Fakes the hand off the bank. He rolls off to the left side. He's going to keep it on himself. He goes out to about the 40-yard line. That's where he'll be taken out of bounds by a Bath defender. <clears throat> yeah, Cole Marshall, number 50, is absolutely the key on that play. There was a block he made uh, against Bath's defensive end that allowed, allowed him to get the corner there and be able to make that play and just a great block. Number four, Dalton Woodruff, the outside linebacker for Bath, 175-pound junior. He was out in coverage, and he makes the tackle out of bounds. So it was 7-11 to go. Indians lead 10-0. And they continue to march the ball down the field. Second and five. Lynch is under center. He's got Banks in the backfield. He's got one man in motion, one to the right. He'll hand the ball to Banks, and Banks is taken down immediately for no gain on the play. A great job by number 52 from Bath, and that is Tyshawn Davis, six foot, 225-pound senior, and he laid the thunder down. Yeah, he did, and he got up pretty excited about it, he too. Did. He, he did. gave himself a little round of applause, <laughs> I, and I like that. I do, know? too. I do, too. I, I really like that because that tells me, you know, he's having fun. He's fired up. He cares about what he's doing, and uh, and he made a good play, and he helped his team, so it's third and five. So here come the end ends with 6.38 to go. Lynch is under center. He's got Banks in the backfield, one to the right, two to the left. As he goes under center. Now he's got a man in motion. They're going to pitch the ball back to Banks to the left side. He gets around the edge, and he picks up about two yards. Almost a first down. He's going to be about... Oh, oh, we got a false start. False start. So another false start. So we continue to see false starts out of both offensive lines. So that's going to bring up fourth and five for the Indians. Yeah, uh, the Bath has declined the penalty, so it, uh, instead of taking it, they're going yeah. to take... Uh, Fourth down. Uh, are you surprised by that move? Uh, well, it's fourth thinking, and yeah. two. If they'd have taken it, it'd have been third and about six. Yeah. I, I thought Coop would have taken that penalty, but uh, I and mean, maybe Bath's thinking here is we're on this side of the fifty, and it, it, so they're probably going to punt, and that's exactly what they're going to do. So going back deep for the Wildcats, number two, Cody Vandemark, and boy, if he gets loose, he's he's got a chance to take one to the house here. An exceptional athlete on the back side of that offense. So he gets, he's going to get an opportunity. He gets the ball in the bounce. Here he goes, tries to go up the middle. He breaks one tackle, goes into the middle, and he's taken down by a host of Indians. And he's met out there at about the 32-yard line. Man, what a dangerous play, though. You know, sometimes it's hard to judge how high a ball is going to bounce. And, you know, if you're on natural grass, natural turf, a lot of times that turf is harder, it bounces higher. If you're on this kind of turf, uh, especially a, a new yeah. field, right. It's, right? it's sort of soft, and it's got a lot of spring to it. And uh, Cody read that right and had a nice return of about 15 yards. So here come the Wildcats with a chance to really close the gap here if they can put some points on the board, whether it be a touchdown or a field goal, with 6.14 to go. If they go on a nice drive here and eat up some of that clock and put any points on the board would be a win-win for the Wildcats. So this is Kane Solomon. He's in the gun. He'll hand the ball off. That goes off the left side, spins around, picks up six hard yards. That's number 17, Skylar Lehman. So a nice job by that young man. And they are going to a quick uh, quick offense here as they go right to the line of scrimmage. 
Yeah, and I think if I'm uh, Bass offense, I'd rather be on the right hash because then it puts my quarterback in the shadows. Right now, he's looking yes, directly right. into the sun. That's a great observation, When it's on the Scott. left side. Yeah, there's Lehman again. He gets by the first defender, gets off the left side. He's got a few to beat, and he's taken down at about the 45-yard line, so some tough yardage, and that's another Union Bank first down for the Bath Wildcats. Yeah, just a great second effort there. Little burst of speed. I like oh man. Yeah. I thought he was going to go there for a minute. Uh, so they found something here in Skyler Lehman as he's back to back plays there, and they've got him in the backfield with Kane Sullivan. That was about a 17 yard pickup. So Sullivan's in the gun. He's going to hand the ball back off to Lehman. He picks up some more tough yardage, and boy, he's going off tackle, Scott. He's not afraid to take those big hits, is he? Well, good vision inside to cut back, too. He went, once he got inside there, picked up a couple to cut back, picked up about two more, three more. Now, again, it's second and five. Second and five with 5.09 to go. Danny Holbrook, Scott Nurse from Shawnee High School on a beautiful Friday night. Kane Sullivan is in the backfield. He's in the gun. He's got a single set back. He's got three to left. He's going to hand the ball off to Lehman. Lehman goes off left side. He tries to get around one. Man, he's going to pick up a first down and a great job by Skyler Lehman as he's picking up tough yardage and he is owning this offense right now. When I think that's what you want if you're Bath is you, you, you don't want to get a, you know, you, you want to just get enough for the first down. Keep right. this drive alive. Keep the clock Absolutely. moving. Ideal scenario, score right before halftime, go in 10 to 7. Absolutely. So Skyler Lehman is picking up all the tough yards with 439 to go. They're about the 35-yard line. Quarterback was in oh. a big hurry there. I think we're going to get a penalty. I don't know if there were any receivers. Yeah, Kane Sullivan was really running for his life. And yeah, he, they uh, call intentional grounding. Yeah, they sure completely. did. So, and I think that's the right call as he tries to flip the ball out, and it uh, just did not happen. That's going to be a loss of down, and that's going to push the ball back, and not what they needed. 4.31 to go. They've got plenty of time here, and the offense is moving, but uh, just not the play they needed right now. No. You know, so many times penalties are drive killers, and, oh, and that particular one is a 15-yard uh, penalty. You go from second and five to now second and 20. Yeah. So second, 20, 25. <laughs> and the home team announcer just kind of <laughs> poured a little salt in the wound. He screamed out second, yeah. a long way to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Northwest Ohio football, you got to love it. So here comes Kane Sullivan, the Wildcats. He's in the gun. He's got a single set back. He's going to hand the ball off to Lehman. Lehman gets off to the left side. He's got a man to beat. He tries to break the sideline there. Gets taken down, but a nice run. Picks up about six yards. Doesn't get back to the line of scrimmage, but some tough yardage for Lehman. Yeah, I like Lehman running the football. He's, he's strong. He's uh, got good vision and seems to be making positive plays. So third and 20 with four minutes to go here until halftime. The Wildcats had a really nice drive going. Kane Sullivan's in the backfield. He's in the gun. He's got three to the left. He's got a single to the right, and Lehman is the back. He hands the ball to Lehman. Lehman goes off left side. Gets to about the 40-yard line to the 39, trying to get back to the original line of scrimmage. That's going to bring up about third and about 15. So this is a huge down here, Scott, with 3.40 to go until halftime. Well... I, yeah, I thought I thought it was th fourth down. Now it's going to be oh, fourth. Oh, you're right. And you're, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. You, I am yeah. stand corrected. It is fourth down. So that was a huge down. Kind of interesting that they chose to run the ball there instead of trying to pick up some yardage to make it manageable in fourth down. But uh, they're going to punt the ball and maybe the wise decision here. And that's why I'm not a coach. So. Yeah. Well, I, you know, <laughs> I'm, th I'm thinking that they they want to minimize the time sure. that they're giving it back to Shawnee. But yeah, to your point. So Bath will be in punt formation. This is Zach Welsh, the punter. And they're going to get Bath with another penalty. Delay a game for the Wildcats. That's going to push the ball back. Not a huge uh, situation here, only five yards. But uh, with three minutes to go, you're going to give the ball back to the Indians. They lead 10-0. Yeah, I think that might have been intentional just uh, to give a little more room to the punter. So Welsh will be in punt formation as he gets the snap, gets the kick up, not a very high kick, fielded at the about the 20-yard line, and he's taken down immediately at about the 21-yard line. That's where Shawnee will take over with 3.01 to go. 
Our touchdown sponsor tonight is Fat Jack's Pizza. Touchdowns by Fat Jack's Pizza. Get to Fat Jack's Pizza before and after the game and enjoy their delicious pizza, fun games, and ice cold drinks. Fat Jack's Pizza is our touchdown sponsor. You know, Danny, I think uh, one of the other things we talked about at the top of special teams, I think Bath has done a pretty good job of special teams. They've had good punt returns, kick returns. Their punt team has done a pretty good job You're of punting the football right. and covering. And uh, as they just did on there with virtually no return, they just got to get that offense going a little bit. Yeah, they, they, you're, you're right. After they gave up the big play, and we talked about that in the first quarter, they've done a great job of settling down, and, and they're, they're a bend but not break defense right now. And, the, and you see right there, they just they stuffed Jordan Banks, and he gets no gain there, and that's going to bring up second and 10. Well, and, you, and you, offensively, they moved the ball from, Absolutely. you know, they, they fielded the punt at the 15, had a return to the 30. They moved it all the way up to about the other 30. And then a couple penalties, intentional grounding, moved him out of out of the opportunity to get the first down and continue the drive. So it's just, you know, those things will get fixed. Uh, they got a great coaching staff over there at Bath. They'll fix those, and when they do, look out. That's right. Here's Dominic Lynch as he goes back to pass, rolls to his right. He's under heavy pressure, gets off to the side, tries to pick up yardage, and he's going to pick up a Union Bank first down. A great job by Dominic Lynch of picking up the first down, getting out of bounds to save that clock. Wow, and just good athleticism. You know, that's nice to have back there. <laughs> I was just getting you know, ready to say. That, that escapability when you're back there and, and there's nothing going on and you just have somebody that can get out of it. And a great job by Dominic Lynch. And you saw right there on that play, as, as Scott said, what a great athlete he is as he creates the, uh, the first down there and gets out of coverage there and uh, picks it up. So here come the Indians with 2.11 to go. They lead 10-0 here. Danny Holbrook, Scott Nurse for WOS Sends Football Cup Week 2 in the state of Ohio as we march on towards the state championships. Here's Lynch as he rolls back, looks across the field, and it is batted at the line of scrimmage. A great job by number 70, Corey Slate, the 6-foot, 265-pound sophomore. Gets his big paws up there and knocks the ball down. That was a nice play. It that sure was, was just a nice play. Well coached. You know, they teach you when, you, when, when you're, you know, trying to shed the block and you see the quarterback go to throw, get your hands up, get to try to get in the passing lane. He did that, batted the football away. Absolutely. So, that's got some big kids up front, Scott. Yes, <laughs> he has do. some big kids. They're 300, 260, 260, 225. So, just a huge lineup. And there's another penalty here. Let's see what this one is. It is backing the Indians up. They have not told us yet what the penalty is. And if they made the call, the PA announcer here didn't pick it up either because he did not relay the call. Yeah, I didn't see any signal. I'm no, not sure what it not. was, but uh, it must have been um, maybe a personal foul because it was 15 yards. Yeah, I was just going to say so it had maybe to be a uh, foul. somebody said something. They maybe shouldn't have. That will not make Coach Cooper happy. So here come the Indians. They have the 15-yard line. Jordan Banks brings the ball up, and he gets through the middle. And a nice run by Jordan Banks. He picks up about eight yards. He is slippery. He you know, he's he really difficult to bring down. You see guys, put, they've got hands on him, shoulders on him, and he's able to just kind of squeeze through and pick up extra yards after contact. Absolutely. So Jordan Banks picked up some more tough yardage. He's been the workhorse tonight for the Shawnee Indians. He and Dominic Lynch have done a nice job of moving the ball down the field. But as the game has went on, the Bath Wildcats have stiffened up, and they've done a great job of keeping that offense in check. Yeah, they have. I, I tell you, really, other than the one big, big touchdown play. pass yeah. play, uh, it, it's been very even game. So Dominic Lynch is in the shotgun. He's got a man in motion. He throws to the left side. He's got a man out there, and he's going to pick up about three yards. That's number 23 for the Shawnee Indians. Jaden Wheeler, the six foot, 185 pound senior. We have a bath timeout. Talked to Jaden's dad earlier and uh, said that uh, practices were tough. I mentioned that earlier, but uh, he said Jaden came home and said uh, Coach uh, was kind of upset last weekend. So. <laughs> They've really responded well, sir. So, 1.14 to go here, Scott. Second and 17 
Uh, you're kind of backed up here. Do you play it conservative? Do you try to push the ball down the field? What's your thoughts here with 1.14 to go until half? Well, I'm looking at the field. Uh, the, the official box down on the field has third down. So I think it is third down. I think yeah. I think what's happening here is Bath wants to preserve some time. Possibly they've got Shawnee back here. If they can make a good play defensively, they can field the, a punt right around the 45, 50 yard line and maybe have an opportunity to score before half. And I'm looking over here at the scoreboard and they're one bad, they, they were one down back. So now they've put back up to third down. So I apologize for that as we'll get it right here. But yeah, I agree. Uh, let's see what the Indians do here with 1.14 to go. And they're up 10 nothing. So Dominic Lynch will bring the Indians out. He's got Jordan Banks in the backfield. He's got one split out wide to the right. He's got two to his left. He goes under center. I would look for Cooper to be conservative here. And here comes Dominic Lynch as he looks across the field. He's got all day to pass. Now he's under a little bit of pressure. He's going to, oh, he almost took a hit and he throws the ball away. He had a man out there. He had number 23 out there, Jaden Wheeler. So uh, Dominic Lynch, all day to pass the ball. That's going to bring up fourth down and obviously a punting situation here. Now, if you're Bath, 104 to go. Do you go after the punt? Well, and see, they, uh, it was a pass play, right? Incomplete sure. pass, so the yeah. clock stops. Right. So that helped Bath out a little Absolutely. bit. They got a minute four. If they can get a good return here and maybe, uh, you know, uh, maybe make something happen, who knows? So here comes the Indians. They're in punt formation. As they'll bring Shandon Sewell on the punt. He gets the almost blocked, and he is knocked down. And there was no flag thrown at all. No flag, and the ball is picked up at about the 44-yard line. But uh, I, I'm, I'm kind of stunned that there was no flag on that play. I don't... You got, to, you got to call it running in or roughing. <laughs> well, I think that that was number 22 in there, uh, Keaton Vernon. Yeah. And, and I think he may have got a hand or a fingertip on the on the I, football. Uh, okay, okay. Because okay. Uh, it, it it came out of there funny. I saw the and if official he got, doing that. Yeah. Yeah, and if he if he got a hand or a finger on the football, then yeah, there's no there's no penalty. Then there's no penalty. Yeah. And I thought when the official was rubbing his hand, I thought he was telling the other official to throw a flag, but he wasn't. He was saying the ball was tipped at the line. Right. Yeah, so here come the Wildcats with 54 seconds to go until halftime, and they're down 10 nothing. Kane Sullivan is in the gun. He's got a single set back. He's got two to the left, two to the right. He looks across the field. He throws the ball out to the right side. He's got his man, Lehman, out there. He gets the reception. He goes across the 50-yard line, picks up about six yards. That's going to bring up second and four as they hurry to the line. 40 seconds to go. Sullivan's back in the gun. He's got Lehman behind him, two to the right, two to the left. As they're in the hurry up, Sullivan looks across, looks across the field, throws to the middle. He's got a man. Oh, nice open field tackle. Are you kidding me? Number three from Shawnee comes up. That is Joey Spiker. The 5'8 junior comes up and just lays the hit down. Well, when they watch film tomorrow, <laughs> I, I can guarantee a coach is going to stop on that play and say that's how it's done. That's right. So that was fantastic. Sullivan, throws across the middle. He's got, oh, he had a man wide open. Intended target out there for bat. Number two, Cody Vandemark. And boy, if he catches that, Scott, he's got all day to run. Yeah, he's just a little bit behind him and he reached out with one hand actually I'm glad he did uh, because had he not been able to make contact that was a pick for yeah. sure look Kane Sullivan throws the ball effortless he's got a yeah. nice arm and he does a good job back there so they're going to give you the middle of the field here Scott with 11 seconds to go let's see what the Wildcats do they look across the field to get their instructions with 11 seconds fourth and one so uh, let's see what they do here Looks like it's kind of an interesting uh, dilemma because uh, they're gonna take a timeout here. You could you could possibly try for a first down call timeout. Sure. Uh, but you, you but I, get out of here. And, and get one more play. But our timeout sponsor tonight is Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. When we come back in the third quarter, we will have our halftime adjustments. Brought to you by like Lauk's Chiropractic. Get some insight from Scott Nurse and we'll figure out uh, what each team needs to do to get back in this game or to stay on top in this game with 11 I'm, seconds to go. I'm just looking down at uh, the track and there's about 75 cheerleaders. <laughs> They're everywhere. <laughs> down on the track. It looks like the, uh, of all ages. Oh I mean, goodness. from very young. It looks like uh, there's some really young ones, three or four or five years old, all so, the way up to right. high school. 
Young so, lady's uh, going to come out and uh, hang out with the high school girls, and I bet they're really happy about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a big deal. So here comes Bath. Fourth and one, 11 seconds to go. Kane Solomon's in the gun. He's got a single setback. He's got two to the right, two to the left. He gets the snap, looks across the field. He's going to scramble off to his right. He's going to throw the ball across the middle. He's got a man out there. He's got the reception. They've got the first down. See if they can get down. And the clock never moved. The clock, and now the clock never moved. I'm watching the play with 11 seconds to go. The reception's made, and the clock never moved. And now they've got a clock issue here. Yeah, they, they, you're right, because I looked at it, too, because I thought, well, Play's going to run out. Right. And it was still 11. Still 11 seconds, yeah. So something happened there. So now the question is, it's kind of like, uh, I, I know I've dealt with this in basketball before. You kind of have to, uh, if you have a known count or a known clock situation, you can, you can reset it. But without that, uh, it may... So they need it, to wait. It may be a challenge. Yeah, let's see what they do. See what they put on the clock as the... The head linesman here is talking to the coaches, trying to decide what they're going to do. Well, and, and let's let's. I, I want to defend my my scoreboard operator because who knows? This is sure. a new oh, scoreboard. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this absolutely. is the first game. Uh, it, it may, you know, there may be new challenges with the way it runs, start sure, starts absolutely. and stops, and all that. It's so a beautiful uh, scoreboard. It yeah, sure is. it's really nice. It so is a beautiful scoreboard. Um, you know, it'd be interesting to me. My guess is they're going to put like one, they're one put second. A second. Yeah, that's a great call, yeah, Scott. Great call. Yeah, I think they'll give them one more play because it's it's not known. It was at 11 seconds, and that was a long play because yeah. you remember yeah, Sullivan scrambled around, then found Sullivan in the middle of the field, and then he made a little run and juke and finally went down. So my guess is really it clock have probably would have yeah. run out, but I, they're going to give him one more play. I tend to agree with you. So Kane Sullivan is in the gun. He's got three to the left, to the right, two to the left, and it looks to me like they're just going to heave it up here and hope for the best. And the Indians are got they've got three up front on the line, and you're uh. going to get a false start. You're going to get a false start here, and that. No, it's a dead ball. It's a dead, you're they'll right. be another yeah, yeah, play. Okay, they'll get another play here. I, I thought that yeah. was going to end the half, but you're right. Yeah, field can't play can't end on a penalty or a, a defensive penalty, but the Shawnee kids dead going. Ball. <laughs> Coach Cooper was trying to convince the kids to run to the locker room. He thought it was over the half. Well, but, I uh, think uh, one of the coaches took off sprinting. <laughs> so with one second to go, they'll have to reset the clock here, and the officials are talking at midfield. Deciding on what they're going to do here. The Indians lead 10 to nothing with one second before halftime. They're going to say there's one more play. Scott, you made the right call there. So first and 10 with one second to go. Indians lead 10 to nothing. They're trying to make some magic happen here. At it's midfield. like when you get the new Xbox or the Madden, you know, the That's Madden right. 2022. It's a, you got to figure out where all the new buttons That's are right. and everything. Make it work. That's right. So here comes Solomon as he gets the ball. He gets scrambling to the right. He's going to heave it up as far as he can throw it. And that ball almost picked off, and that will end the first half. So a great first half here for both squads. Shawnee leads 10 to nothing here at halftime. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. We're back here at Shawnee High School. About ready to start the third quarter. The Indians lead 10 to nothing. Our halftime adjustments are presented by Lout Chiropractic and Weight Loss, offering area residents good health through chiropractic care. Take a look at this second half coming up here, Scott, and you got to believe that Bath's got to do something offensively to get the momentum. Well, I agree, and, and I think that the big adjustment they've got to make is really no changes offensively sure. other than no penalties. That's you know, a great because point. they've really moved the football really well in the first half. It's just come down to a couple couple penalty plays that have put them behind the chains, behind the sticks, and they haven't been able to recover. If they can eliminate those penalties, I think they would have points on the board. Oh, I, I completely agree with you. And for Shawnee, they had the offensive momentum in the first quarter, and boy, Bath really buckled down defensively. What's Shawnee got to do to get some momentum back? Well, Shawnee kind of bot got bottled up. Yeah. And I think uh, I think they got to return to trying to get the football out on the edge. They did a lot of that early on in the game, and then they kind of went between the sticks, between the, sure. you know, inside the trenches. We're running with uh, Banks up the middle, 
and, and they weren't getting as much. And Absolutely. I think they got to return to the outside, to the edge, where their speed is a deciding factor. Thank you, Scott. Our halftime adjustments brought to you by Light Ch Lout Chiropractic, offering air residents good health through chiropractic care. 11.55 here to go. Shawnee kicks off to Bath, and Bath will take over at about the 30-yard line. As the sun has settled down, we are in the nightfall here, and the temperatures are low 70s. Perfect night for football. Yeah, I love football. <laughs> you know, the second week when, when the weather is like this. Oh, uh, my goodness. You know, it's just fantastic. And, and there are a lot of people up here that I hadn't seen for a while, you know, yeah, because I only see them during football season. So it's a great opportunity to visit with folks at halftime. Uh, you know, you love high school football. So this and is, in this area, it's great oh, football. It's, it's the best. And this is Lehman. We got a heavy dose of him in the second quarter as Bath started relying on him. And they're going to start here in the third quarter. He's going to get the first handoff. Well, and rightfully so. Oh, he, yeah. He had a good second quarter uh, running the football and catching the football and fielding punts. Um, he's an integral part of what they do, and, and he stepped it up in the second quarter for sure. So this is Solomon. He's in the gun. He's got Lehman in the backfield, two to the left, one to the right. Sullivan's going to go to the left side. Layman's out front blocking for him, and uh, they're going to take him down for about a one-yard gain. That'll bring up third and seven. So again here, Bath is in a third and seven, third and long, uh, trying to get the momentum here and pick up another first down. Yeah, good job by Shawnee's defense there. Great they're job, really yeah. just stringing the play out to the sidelines. You know, um, Sullivan's looking for a gap. He's he looking was. for a crease. Nothing came open extended him all the way to the sideline and really shut it down. So this good job defense. Sullivan is in the gun. He's got Lehman in the backfield. He's got two to the left, two to the right. He looks across the field, throws out to Lehman, and Lehman, it goes off his fingertips, and that'll bring up fourth down. That'll bring on the punting unit for the Bath Wildcats. So a great job defensively by Shawnee to get the first three and out of the half. Well, I'm not surprised by that because Coach Cooper's pretty fiery, yeah. and he, he, he's a pretty fiery guy, <laughs> and, and he probably got them excited coming out at halftime, and so the best thing for an excited team is to start on defense, Absolutely. and that's what Shawnee did. Good stop there. So Bath will punt the ball back to Shawnee. Ball is fielded about the 38-yard line, brings it up the sideline. He's got a, well, he thought he had a nice avenue there to go through, but he's taken out of bounds, and Shawnee will start just across midfield. So great starting position for the Indians. Yeah, they're going to be at the 43-yard line, which is great starting field position, no question about it. Not exactly what Bath wanted coming out with a 10-0 no. deficit, but, uh, you know, now we're going to test the Bath defense. So Dominic Lynch will be under center again for the Indians. The six foot, 179 pound junior led the offense in the first half. He's gonna be under center. He's got Banks in the backfield. He's got two to the left. He'll hand the ball to Banks. Banks goes up the middle and he'll get about three yards taken down by a slew of Wildcat defenders. Yeah, we talked about this Danny at halftime. We, you got Banks running up the middle and he, he's uh, certainly proven himself to be oh, pretty yes. good up through the middle five yards there so it's going to be second five but i really feel like for that big play that breakout yep. big yep. play get him on the outside edge on the wild wide side and, and and let that athlete do his thing in open space so second six with 10 10 to go on the web insurance scoreboard lynch is under center banks in the backfield he's got two to the left tight ends off the line they'll swing back ball back to banks banks gets a board a block he's off to the left side and he is going to the house touchdown indians that is the call of the night scott nurse you said it get that young man on the sides and let him go well it, good blocking by shawnee there too and, and you give banks a little crease like that and he's gone that's right and, and that uh, is a fat jack's pizza touchdown fat jack's pizza is our touchdown sponsor well, he's quick. He's yeah. quick. <laughs> he's really quick. And that's what I say. You get him on the outside. You get athletes out there one-on-one, -on -one, two two-on-one. They can make a move, and then once they get a step, it's gone. Yep, so that'll make it 16-0. They'll try to tackle on the extra point. 9.58 to go. Yeah. Like Three-play drive. I can't call plays like that. Cooper's <laughs> going to want me on his staff before long. And, you know, I got stuff to do. <laughs> Kick it so, up and good. I, I don't want to go to Saturday morning practices and so all that you, anymore. I've done my time. If you can hear us, Coach Coop, yeah. Scott Nurse is not available. <laughs> I am not available. <laughs> You're watching so. high school football on WOSN. <laughs>
Jordan Banks. Goes 40 yards on the left side of the field. Scampers in for the touchdown to make it 16 to nothing. They tack on the extra point. And with 9.58 to go on the Web Insurance scoreboard, the Indians lead the Wildcats 17 to nothing. And Scott Nurse called it. So uh, you, you, you're, you're like Kevin Wilson at Ohio State. You're the play call extraordinaire. <laughs> Here come the Wildcats. <laughs> I've watched a few games over the years, for sure. Been in quite a few. And it looks like it may, the ball may have come out, yeah. and it did. And Shawnee pounces Johnny on the spot, Scott. And just a disaster opening to the third quarter for the Wildcats. Well, and we talked about that at the beginning of the, uh, the broadcast. Bounce back, right? If sure. you make a bad play or you had a bad half, are you going to bounce back? Bath hasn't done that. Then defensively, Shawnee is able to score sure. on Bass defense. And so that's really tough. That gets you down. And now we have the combination of all three of the things that we talked about, which was the usual yeah. suspects. Right. The special teams play, kickoff, turnover, always huge. And, and they're emotional energizers. And now Shawnee has the ball really with a chance to put this game out of reach. So Lynch is in the gun. He's got a man in motion. He's got two to the left. He's going to hand the ball off. They're going to try a little sweep play across the left side. And he's taken down with about a two-yard gain. That's number five for the Indians. That is Chase Beery, the 5'11 senior. Picks up about two yards. Yeah, Chase is their short yardage guy. Yes. He's yep. a power back. He doesn't average high numbers. He's just, uh, you know, you can count on him for two to three yards every play. Good, strong back. Little misdirection there. Season 18 of the Sports Report started Friday night. Join Patrick Kamler for a full hour of the most comprehensive football coverage around all season long. Fridays at 10 on WTLW. They do a great job in that studio show. Patrick is awesome. He He's is. unbelievable. It's, it's yeah. really an art. I've been in there quite a few times to watch him work. You know, on a Friday night when you got games and scores and highlights coming in left and right, and, and he's our, able yeah. to keep it straight. It's Scott, just amazing. For, for our viewers that don't know, that's a production. There's a lot of people out oh. there. It is it is big time. There are people <laughs> running the hallways. There are people <laughs> writing, uh, you know, the crew yeah. scripts and get them into the teleprompters. I mean, it's just, it's a, it's, it's, a, a, it's an event, yeah. and, and they're very good at it. They're super. And uh, I, I feel like, you know, I had, I had, Four kids that all participated in high school sports, sure. and I feel like really WSN and TV 44 have been a great service to wow. our community by putting these games and events on TV. It's just fantastic for, for parents, grandparents, the kids, for everybody. So Lynch fires across the sidelines, and that ball goes off the hands of his receiver. Goes incomplete, so that'll bring up fourth down. Let's see what uh, Shawnee does here. Yeah, you're right. Uh, they do a fantastic job, and you, you, I don't know of any other station in Ohio that broadcasts high school sports like we do, and uh, Ben Reif and the crew, they do a fantastic job. Well, and, and, and the excellence of it oh, with, with replays and multiple cameras and, and live recordings, uh, live, live broadcasts, it's really... Uh, I, I'm so thankful to have them in our community, and I, and I don't say that as somebody that works for them. I say that as, as somebody that has benefited by sure. the... the the, the product that they bring to us. So, so what you're saying is Patrick needs to have us on the sports report, you know, for our insight. <laughs> Maybe so. Maybe so. I don't know. We, <laughs> We've been I, wrong a I, lot tonight. I, I, yeah. <laughs> Just because you got the Jordan Banks touchdown. <laughs> yeah, right? right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. I am not available to coach. <laughs> Uh, but you will you will take some critiquing during basketball season, I'm sure, because well, a lot of people I, like to do that, right? Yeah, I, I, get, <laughs> I get that during the basketball season, whether I ask for it or not, <laughs> unfortunately. Oh, so Shawnee's lining up here. It looks like, Scott, they're lined up for a 48-yard field goal. And well, and again, I, I think they're in the same yeah. situation they were sure. in the first half. It's too, it's too far, really, for a field goal. It's too close to punt. It's fourth and ten. You're sure. really not going to so, go yeah, for it. Right, right, right. So maybe they're going to look at it here and see if they can get a penalty. Um, and then that will change the outlook. Or they'll take a delay and move it back five more, yeah. punt again. You know, it's so, just uh, it's kind of whatever Coop has decided on here. So it looks like it's marked at about the 36-yard line, maybe 37-yard line. So 46, 47-yarder here. Yeah, it looks like there's a, a little bit of an issue with the clock again. They're trying to adjust it. They moved it to 8.05, so they added about nine seconds sure. on. Coop was worried about that extra nine seconds. He was, he was yeah. He lost, you know. So. Hope he's not listening. It's the details. 
<laughs> so here we go. You know, coaches love the details, That's and right. I appreciate that. That's right. He's lined up for a big-time field goal. And they are going to attempt to snap his back. Hold is good. Kick is blocked, and is blocked by Bath. And they're going to pick it up and see they what happens here. They, they sure can advance it. So they're moving back and forth. He goes to the left side. He's got blockers out there, Scott. He's got a wall of blockers. A huge pickup by Bath. He's going to take it down the sidelines, pushed out of bounds at about the 15-yard line. So a big-time break for the Bath Wildcats, exactly what they needed here in the early minutes of the third quarter. Well, you're... you're what a remarkable play. Right, uh, right. I, I, I'm shocked, at the, first of all, that they went for the field goal. Oh, I, I, I completely um, agree with you. But uh, Bath, great job there getting penetration, makes the block. And and I thought he was bottled up back there because yes. he initially fumbled the football and picked it up. And, and, and I think that's what happens. You see a lot of times guys bobble the football, everyone relaxes, and all of a sudden it's a big play big for play. Bath. So here comes Kane Solomon. He's under center. He's got Lehman in the backfield. He hands the ball to the up back, the first they, man through. They got to capitalize on this. They do. For, You're right. Bath's yeah. got to score here to keep themselves in the game with a chance. So, what a turn of events. Absolutely. That was Tyshawn Davis, the defensive tackle in on the uh, offensive play. So good for him. He gets a carry of about two yards. That'll bring up second and seven, three yards credit on the run. So Solomon in the backfield, he's under center. He's got Lehman in the backfield. He's got Davis in the up back position. He's got a man in motion. They'll hand the ball and he is, Lehman is taken down. And you want to talk about a missile coming through that line. That is number three for the Indians. Joey Spiker, we, Joey Spiker's been hitting big all night. Dude, that's the second major hit he's had tonight, just laying a run. What a back great out. name for a defensive man, Spiker. He yeah. is really spiking him. Yeah, he, absolutely. <laughs> So Joey Spiker comes up and makes a great play defensively. So Salvin will bring the Wildcats back to the line of scrimmage. He's under center. He's got Lehman in the tailback position. Davis in the up back. He's got one to the right. The tight ends offset to the left. Sullivan throws it up. He's got He's a man got out there. He's got oh, him. and he misses it. Well, you know, I saw before the play started, I saw they had Cody Vandemark and yeah. single yep. coverage on the outside, and he had plenty of space out there, and it, it, it was all him. Cody He Vandemark. was the only one on that island. Well-thrown football. Great call. Great effort. I, uh, and Scott, he it put in. it only where Cody could get, and only Cody Vandemark can catch it. And unfortunately, he just dropped the ball. Yeah, I've... I've, I've I've had two sons at quarterbacks, and that's a, that's exactly what you want to do. Sure. If you're going to miss, you always want to miss long and to the outside. You miss short and to yep. the inside, that's where the defenders are. That's a great call. So here comes Sullivan. He's in the gun. He's got trips to the right. He's got two to the left. We are at fourth and nine, 632 to go. Bath has to capitalize here. He steps up in the pocket, throws it across the middle. He's got a man, and he misses him. He, he, the, he hit him in the hand, Scott. He had the right call there. Number 21 for the Bath Wildcats, Vinny Vendetta, the 6'1 sophomore. He, he did. I, I think number 24, Jack Schindler, sophomore. Yes. I think he might have got a hand on that defensively. It looked like it may have been slightly tipped, just enough to, to affect the receiver. But, uh, but yeah, it, you know. Turn the ball over on down, so a great opportunity wasted there by the Wildcats. Well, they, plenty of time here. You got to get a stuff. You got to get a stop. Get the football back. Field position has radically changed. So Dominic Lynch hands the ball off to Banks. It goes up the middle. Jordan Banks continues to be that workhorse for the Indians. Keep the clock moving at 6:17 to go on the Web Insurance scoreboard. Our scoreboard sponsor tonight is Web Insurance, serving Lyman and Allen County for more than 100 years, with offices in downtown Lyman and Bluffton. Web Insurance is our scoreboard sponsor. Banks is impressive. He's he, very impressive, yeah. He, 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 it looks like there's nothing. He gets five, six yards. So here comes Lynch as he comes under the center. He's got Banks in the backfield, hand to bank. Banks goes across tackle. He's going to pick up some hard yardage there. Gets up to the, oh, I, Scott, he may have got the first down. He may have picked up another Union Bank first down. That's what I say. There's nothing there, absolutely nothing there. Bass got him bottled up, and somehow he gets five yards enough for the first down. He's small enough, he's, he's hiding behind that offensive line, and he's strong enough to get through those tackles. Well, and credit the offensive line. Obviously, they're, they're giving him some gaps to run through, but I've just been impressed with him all night, uh, making 
the mo most out of not much sometimes. And you know, the one thing we haven't touched on a little tonight is, is Coop's kids from Sean, nothing's phasing them right now. They gave up a big play to Bath, and they they held serve, and they continue to play hard. Here's Banks to the sweep to the right. He looks to follow his blockers. He gets to the outside. He's got one man to beat. He gets across the 40-yard line to about the 45, picks up some tough, and he gets another Union Bank first down. Yeah, just good patience there. Again, looked like nothing. Looked like he was strung out to the sideline. He was just good and patient running, waited. And then you could see the acceleration. Yeah. I mean, you could actually he on see the gas. Yep. that he stepped on the gas and took off. And you saw in last week, he was also Coach Cooper's offensive player of the game. And now you see why. He is a talented back, and he will be high on a lot of WBL radar, radars this year. Yeah, and I think uh, I think teams will underestimate him a little bit because he's not sure. he's, he's not huge. Yeah. He's not overpowering. From, is, from the way he looks. Sure, but. and this is Lynch calling his own number. He goes up across the 50-yard line, picks up about seven yards, and a nice run by Dominic Lynch. So 4.41 to go. Danny Holbrook, Scott Nurse from Shawnee High School. The Indians continue to lead 17 to nothing over the crosstown rival Bath Wildcats. One of these teams is going to go 1-1. One and one. The other team is going to fall to 0-2. And, two. and and Scott, you you, t you talked about that earlier, and you go 0 2 right now, and that's uh, a big hole to have to climb out of. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's it's not so much a big hole in terms of the losses sure. and overcoming that, but it, it's a mental. Oh, absolutely. It's it's a mental hole that the, the team gets into when they go to 0 2 because, you know, now now it changes your whole mindset. But absolutely. You know, honestly, I th I think Bath. They're going to look back at this game, uh, and we still got lots of time sure. left, but they're going to look back at this game and say, hey, we had opportunities. And we, uh, yeah. we had scoring opportunities, and we committed a, a penalty. We, we had them. scoring opportunities on a turnover that they had inside their 20 and just weren't able to convert. Absolutely. So it's, it's just, you know, they're, they're just real close. I wouldn't be surprised to see them end up having a really good season Sure. Uh, it, when they fix a few of those. And you know that Coach Rindle will have those fixed. Here comes Lynch as he throws the ball out of bounds. He could now there's no receiver the over yeah. there, so I, I'm thinking they called a penalty in the first half on Bath. You're absolutely right, Scott. There was there is, no one over there. There is not a Shawnee player on that side of the field outside the hash mark. And I don't no one from Bath is even saying anything. And you're right, there was not a, a black uniform in sight. Yeah, in the first half, Sullivan did that, and um, and they called a penalty, and so I'm a little confused by that. But uh, maybe there was somebody over there I didn't see. Well, he was behind the uh, bath bench if he was, because <laughs> there wasn't anybody over there. So here come the Indians with 3:38 to go here until the end of the third quarter. Dominic Lynch will go under center. He's got Banks in the backfield. He's got two to the left. He's got a man in motion. He'll pitch the ball back to Banks. Banks goes off left tackle. He finds a crease. He picks up three or four hard yards before he's taken down by a slew of Bath Wildcats. Well, that's the other thing that I like about that toss sweep is when you go left or right side, especially the wide side of the field, it strings out the defense. A lot of times the defensive pursuit angles are, are retreating. So yes. even if they read the play right and they make the tackle, a lot of times you picked up three or four yards before you have Absolutely. contact. So that's a difficult play to defend to keep it at short game. So here comes Lynch with three minutes to go until the end of the third quarter. He'll go under center. He's got Banks in the backfield. He's got his tight end in motion. He'll go set up on the line, one to the left, one to the right. Lynch goes back. He looks across the field, swings the ball out to Banks. Banks catches the screen, goes off to the right side. He's got a little room. He's going to pick up, it looks like, maybe just a yard short of a first down. So Jordan Banks continues to be the focal point of that offense as he is catching the ball and he is running the ball. And that is going to be a ball. Let's see. Yeah, it's going to be fourth and about a yard and a half, maybe two, Scott. Well, great effort by number 58 for Bath, uh, Quentin Collins. And Coach Cooper is going to elect to go for it. And, uh, boy, but if he gets a uh, first down here, he can really control that fourth quarter because it's going to run that clock all the way down. Yeah, and I think uh, I think what you're going to see here is I, I would be surprised if they don't quarterback sneak it. It's just short yardage. Yes. If he sees a gap on either side, they're going to go with Banks. So wow, they just they went got him. right to the meat of that heart of that offensive line. Yeah. And right now you're seeing that Shawnee offensive line flex their muscle. When we talked about them, and honestly, you look at Bath, they're getting a little bit tired on that defensive line. Well, the defense has been out there a long yep. time. They sure um, have. Uh, not only in the second half, most of the second half, but 
even in the first half. So, and, and let, let's be real about it too. To be honest, most high school teams in this area, Shawnee, Bath included, ways, yeah. most of their better players are playing both yep. ways. Yep. So uh, it really, you know, a lot of times you worry about, you know, sure. one side of the ball get tired or whatever. They're, they're out there on every play. So it doesn't really matter um, in that way. So Lynch will sweep toss back to Banks. Banks looks to get around the edge. He'll go back into the middle and pick up about four yards. That'll bring up second and six with a minute 20 to go. Last week, the Shawnee Indian offensive line did not allow a sack to happen. So, you know, kudos to them. And, and you said it earlier, when you've got a quarterback like Dominic Lynch who can get out and create on the boundaries, he really helps your offensive line. So we are under a minute to go here in the third quarter. Shawnee leads 17 to nothing. They continue this drive as they are forcing their will upon the Bath Wildcat defense. Dominic Lynch goes under center. He's got two to the left. He's got a man in motion. He's going to hand, or fake the handoff. He's going to throw out to his receiver on the right side, and they're going to pick up close to a first down. So it'll be about third and three. Well, it's interesting that areas to improve, Coach Cooper said, you know, after the LCC sure. game, he said areas that we need to improve in. We had two fumbled snaps tonight. I don't believe they, they had any. They haven't, no. No, Bath had He's, one, but they, yeah. he said they had three, three and outs, three times where they went in, three plays, and they're out. Uh, they've done a better job of extending and, and, and keeping drives alive tonight. Um, he talked about third and fourth down conversions, only 36% against LCC. And tonight, clearly, they've converted on several fourth downs. Uh, the third and fourth down conversion has been much higher than that. So, um, you know, really uh, some some improvement is, is able to be seen. Absolutely. So that's going to bring the third quarter to an end. After three quarters here at Shawnee High School, the Indians continue to lead the Bath Wildcats 17 to nothing. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Welcome back to the start of the fourth quarter where the Shawnee Indians continue to lead 17 to nothing. They've got the ball at a 25-yard line. And uh, before they can run a play, it looks like uh, Coach Cooper's going to take a timeout. And, boy, he's upset, uh, Scott. I I'm not real sure what he's fired up about. He's coaching. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yes. he's coaching That's right, right. now. And, and, and they just came out of a quarter break. They should have known exactly what to do. That's your and, right. And somebody uh, didn't apparently know their job uh, yeah. because he had to use a timeout. Now, in a game like this, they're up 17-0 going into the fourth quarter. That timeout probably isn't going to hurt you. But in games down the road, and he where that, yeah. he, that's right. You've got to be focused and come out of that quarter break knowing exactly your job. He cannot afford to use a timeout in that situation. And uh, so, you know, it's a coaching opportunity. And, and uh, you know, all the coaches uh, on, on, in, in this area on both sides of the field you know, they're, they're still coaching. It's early in the season. Nothing's nothing's sure. for granted. Absolutely. We're now accepting nominations for the John Reed Leadership Award. Nominate coaches who exemplify Christian character, humility, discipline, mentorship, leadership, and commitment to others and excellence on the field. Nominations can be made at WOSN.tv slash John Reed. So here come the Indians with 12 minutes to go here in the ball game. They lead 70 to nothing. Lynch goes back. He looks across the field. He rolls to his right. Signals for his receiver. Throws it back to the end zone. Deep onto the right side. Just over the outstretched arms of his receiver. All day to throw back there on that one. Yeah, and again, exactly what you want. If you're going to miss, miss long. Miss away from the defender. And uh, where only your receiver even has a remote shot of catching that. And, uh, you know, good job of buying some time. Giving his receivers a chance to get open. So fourth down, let's see here what the Indians do. They're, it looks like they're going to bring the field goal unit out. Well, you know, I'm not confident in, in what's going on. We've seen the field goal unit come out tonight on a variety of occasions. We've seen penalties. We've seen field goals. We've seen a blocked <laughs> field goal. Right. Um, this one's You from, know, this, this, this unit brings some uncertainty for sure. Kick is up, and it is going to fall short, and that was from 43 yards out. So... Just falls short, and uh, that, that was kind of hurried along there. That uh, didn't look real good there. Yeah, you know, the, th the thing is about it, though, is that it may have been too long for the kicker, 
but it may have been an opportunity for them to work on field goals in a live game situation, knowing that they're up 17-0. I, I like know. the fact that Coach Cooper has put him out there for 48-yard field goals. Right. I really like that. He's right. showing a lot of confidence in that kid. Right. And he's good. Hey, look, with, with the way the season is, they're going to need him at some time this year to make a big kick. That's right. And, and we've all seen the highlights where the kicker makes a field right. goal that makes a difference in the game. So, uh, yeah, that's a great confidence booster for, for a young player, no question. But now Bath has the ball at the 20. That once again, Gotta the defense is stiffened, yep. and they've held Shawnee out of the end zone. So here comes Kane Sullivan and the Wildcats. He's in the gun. He's got Lehman in the backfield. He's got to the right, to the left. Ball goes snap back a little quick. Sullivan looks across the middle. It throws it deep down the middle. Almost picked off the intended target for the Bath Wildcats, number 21, Vinny Vendetta, the 6'1", 160-pound sophomore. That's a sweet name. It is. You know? Know? I yeah. like that. I can say Vinny, that all Vinny, Vinny Vendetta. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, uh, Sullivan had all day back there. Great job by he the did. Bath offensive line. Oh, there had to be. Oh, well, a lot of movement there. Yeah. All the receivers moved and the quarterback moved, but the line, no one on the line moved. I want to know if that's his real name. Is that his real name, Vinny Vendetta? Yeah, I like it, though. I do, too. I that's sure a do. football name. Oh, that's a great football yeah. name. Yeah, absolutely. So 11.42 to go. Indians lead 17 to nothing. Again, you know, a penalty puts you behind the sticks. Now, now it's second and 15, so things change. You're now trying sure. to catch up. Sure. Now you got to try to look for plays that maybe you would, would rather not run, but eight and 10 yard plays instead of a, a nice run play. So Sullivan's in the gun. He's got Lehman in the backfield. He swings the ball at the Lehman. Lehman catches the 10, goes across the middle, and he's shoestring tackle, tries to get back to the original line of scrimmage, but he's going to fall just about a yard short. Maybe maybe picks up the line of scrimmage. No, he's going to be about two yards short. Yeah, Lehman's had that play several times tonight, and, and, and every time he's cut it back into the middle. Yeah, he has. I, right. I'd like to see him once just turn, on, to the turn on the yep. out afterburners and get on the outside, get on the edge and see what he can do. So Sullivan's going to roll out to his left, throws it across the middle, and he just throws it over top of number two for the Wildcats. That's Cody Vandemark. Yeah, when you're running to your left as a quarterback, that so you have to pivot at the waist and turn your shoulders in order to make a throw. Uh, if you don't do that, a lot of times you're going to get a wild throw or you're going to get a throw like like he had here where, where you just don't have much on it. Sure. And, um, you know, that that's, that's not what you want. <clears throat> So that'll bring up the punter, Zach Welch. Last week, Zach had a nice night. Five punts for 155 yards, 31-yard average. So the punt is fair caught at midfield. Well, you know, Shawnee has done a nice job tonight, you know, they in a variety of areas. But most of the punts that Bath has punted tonight, Shawnee has caught. Yes, yes. So, uh, you know, when you see a lot of times, you get, I get a little skeptical, you see a punter with a huge average, a lot of times that's because teams don't feel the punch. Sure. They hit the ground, they, you get an extra 15, 20 yards with the ball bouncing down the field. Shawnee has done a good job of catching the punt. And even if they don't advance it, they're avoiding, they're picking up 8, 10, 15 yards yeah. by not letting the ball bounce around. You can see they are well coached in every phase of the game. So here comes Jordan Banks again. He's picking up some tough yards. He's going to pick up eight yards, Scott. He's just pushing that pile back. Yeah, he's impressive. He is really impressive. Wow. So 10.48 to go here in the fourth quarter. Shawnee leads 17 to nothing. Danny Holbrook, Scott Nurse from Shawnee High School on a beautiful week two in the state of Ohio for high school football. So here come the Indians. Lynch is under center. He's got Banks in the backfield. He's got a man in motion. He's going to swing the ball back to Banks. And a heavy pursuit by the Wildcats and a great tackle. And that is number, looks like number one for the Bath Wildcats. Sorry, that is number four. I apologize. That's Dalton Woodruff. Scott, last week I had the chance to go uh, up to uh, Cannon, went to the Hall of Fame. And my wife and I took a little day trip up there, and we also went over to Maslin High School and checked out their facilities. And uh, look, <laughs> big time high school football. <laughs> oh yeah, it's it's uh, yeah, big time up there in, in those schools. You know, Division One schools are so yep. big. Yeah, 
they're like mini colleges. I was very impressed with their stadium, but I was more impressed with their indoor facility. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it's unbelievable. It sure is. So here comes Lynch. He's under center. He's got Banks in the backfield. He fakes the pitch back. He's going to call his own number. Gets off to the right side. Does a little wiggle waggle and gets the first down. Gets the Union Bank first down. Dominic Lynch, he's elusive tonight. Well, no question. I think that was a broken play. I think he turned around to, to pitch that football, and there was no back, and so yeah. he just had kind of made something happen. And Lynch and, uh, is uh, cramping up a yeah, little bit. Yeah, I think so. it's a cramp. It yeah. looks like, you know, um, anytime you got one of your buddies doing medical touch. treatments on you, <laughs> it's probably a cramp. Uh, so. When the medical staff lets their, their your best friend <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, help you out. So. So. <laughs> we kid, of course. Yeah, we got a man down on the field. We're going to take a timeout. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Welcome back to Shawnee High School. It was Dominic Lynch that was taken off the field, but he went off on his own power, and he's uh, getting treatment right now, and just looks like a cramp right now, Scott. So we're going to see Caleb Bacon come in, the 5'11 sophomore. He's under center here. Anytime you got Banks in the backfield, you can just uh, hand the ball. Up. Boy, he was met in the hole. Did you see that, Scott? Number 51, Carson Kennard for Bath. Met him in the hole, and they was, you could hear the pads popping all the way up here. Yeah, no question about it. You know, and Dominic Lynch, that's a huge piece of your offense, and he comes out. It, it, look, it looks to be just a cramp. Yeah, I think you're right. Scott. You know, but 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 if you're, you know, it, it, if you're number eight, and you've been standing on the sidelines talking to your buddies, you know, thinking about uh, <laughs> this game's just about over. I'm a sophomore. I'm probably not going into this game, and all of a sudden, boom, yep. you're in. Yep. <laughs> you know, you got to be ready. So here come the Indians. They will run it right off tackle, getting some tough yards, and that's Beery. Barry takes it up to the right side and picks up another Union Bank first down. Wow, Chase Beery. He says, hey, Jordan Banks, I can do the tough yards too. Yeah. I like Bacon. Uh, you know, he, he, he doesn't look to be too nervous about no. the situation, uh, although they're not uh, signaling plays in. He's coming over and getting them from the sidelines. Sure. But I'm getting a look down here at uh, Dominic Lynch, and he looks to be okay. He's up on his feet. Looks like they're getting some fluids in him, and uh, – yeah, if it's, uh, you know, you're up 17-0, eight minutes right. left in the game, uh, he's probably done for the night. Yeah. This is Barry again. Look, I mean, you're running the ball as well as Johnny is right now. There, there's no right. sense in rushing him back in the game, and, and you give your young quarterback, the backup, a chance, a big WBL game, and a chance to, you know, make some plays. Well, and, and that's what you want. You want to try to give experience, real live game experience, because you never know when you might have to draw on that at some point, even if it's for a series. Sure. Sure. Uh, it could be, uh, you know, the series that makes or breaks a game down the line. So it's good experience for a young guy to come in with the first team. Absolutely. Get a feel for it. Get a feel for the speed. So Bacon will go under center. He's got Banks and Berry in the backfield with him. He's got one to the left. He'll hand the ball to Berry. Berry is met in the hole by big number 52 for the Bath defense. You know, one thing Bacon's got to do is after he hands it off, he's got to carry out his fakes. He's, he's, he's handing the football off and then watch a turn and watch. And, and uh, you know, something young quarterbacks tend to do. But typically, you got to hand that ball and, 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 and carry out your fakes so that when you decide sure. to pull it. Yeah, absolutely. Gotta... Then uh, you've lulled that uh, corner to sleep and you get an opportunity for a big play. The defensive end is reading everything you do. So. Right. And Tyshawn Davis with a big tackle for the Wildcats. So. It is third and eight with just around seven minutes to go here in the ball game. Bacon under center. He's got a man in motion. They're going to let him roll to his right. He's going to keep it himself. Throws it down the field. Oh, just misses his intended target. A little behind him. I tell you what, Bath has done. I, Danny, Bath has played great defense. They have. They have. Uh, from the 25 in. They have really, uh, uh, you know, stiffened inside the red zone and when Shawnee gets close to the red zone it's been very difficult um, I, I, I feel like uh, you know there was a big play that touchdown play early in the first half that went for long yardage but other than that there's really been um, you know Bath has done a really good yeah. job defensively they had the other like 40 yard run from Banks so you take those two plays out of the mix and it's been a relatively even football game now I, I understand that that's part of the game right sure, the big plays sure. 
But I, I, I feel like Bath has done a great job, but I and think they're you, so yeah. close. I think you said it earlier. They're, they're a player or two away from, from – who knows, you know, if it turns the tide in this game. But th th it's not It's not like they're getting ran over. They're, no. they're, they're, they're this like, solid no, team no. Yeah. who's just a, a player or two away from – and I think you're right. I think they're going to turn it around and, and have a good season. Yeah, I think the defense is, is really good. It's just, uh, you know, a player or two – where one team scores and then a play or two where you have a penalty that cut, kills a drive and sure. eliminates the opportunity for you to score, that that's that's a score for the other team and a missed opportunity for you. That, that, yes. that Now yes. you've got a two score, three score difference. Yeah, that's a great it, it really can be that close. You know, I, I, you see it a lot of times in basketball, too, where it's a tie game and a team misses one shot and the other team goes down and hits a three. Now all of a sudden it's a five or six point game. Momentum changes. So Shawnee is going to set up for a, looks like about a 39-yard field goal from the 29. So they're going to give this young man another opportunity. Snap is back. Kick is up. And it looks like, oh, he oh. just misses off to the side and just underneath. And uh, both officials looked at each other. <laughs> hey, but it doesn't matter how many no. he misses tonight because no. he made the first one Absolutely. and he has the first points ever on this turf. That's on right. the new turf. That's right. So good for that. No one can ever take that away from him. <laughs> That's right. Season 18 of the Sports Report started Friday night. Join Patrick Cameron for a full hour of the most comprehensive football coverage around all season long. Fridays at 10 p.m. on WTLW. College season's around the bend. Scott, I know you'll be watching the UC Bearcats and the Buckeyes, and uh, your thoughts on the upcoming season? Yeah, it's, uh, I think the Buckeyes are going to be really, really good this year. No question about it. I'm going to go to the Notre Dame game and the, uh, the first two games there, and then uh, Cincinnati, I think, has an opportunity as well. They got one big game, but, but I think, uh, you know, for them to have any chance in the playoffs, they, they have to be undefeated and, and really – was a that special that may not be year. enough. Yeah, special season. Yeah, last they year. had star power last year that allowed them, I think, to to the little bit of extra, you know, something to get them in. I had a little sauce last year and yeah, sauce they Gardner. Did. <laughs> oh my goodness! A big, big hit as Sullivan goes down. Number 34 for the Shawnee defense, and that is, if I can get a number here. Drew Eisel, wow, 5'8", yeah, junior. I think, honestly, Cody Vandermark uh, m missed the play because it looked right. like yeah. Sullivan was was reaching to try to hand the ball off to him and just didn't yeah. connect. Here's Sullivan. He looks across the middle. He's got his man. He's got a connection. They're going to be about two yards short of a first down. Six minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I think you go for it here. I, I think you have no choice down 17 to nothing, and they're going to go right to the line. They've made that decision. So it looks like about a fourth and about a yard and a half here. Sullivan's in the gun. He's got a single setback. He's got two to each side. He looks across, swings it out. They're going to, oh, and I thought they'd pick up a, and you're going to get a, a, a personal foul because Kane Sullivan got just destroyed in the backfield, and the flag went down. That's going to be a big 15-yard penalty against the Shawnee Indians. Roughing the passer. He, he gave the signal to Bath, but it's clearly for Shawnee. Yeah, so they'll pick up a first down. That's good to see. Hopefully, uh, you know, Sullivan's okay. But Yeah, he laid down on the turf for a few minutes, but he did bounce back up. So that is another Union Bank first down. Yeah, Bath is fortunate there. I, I feel like, uh, you know, in those short yardage situations, I like that play call, a little bit of a swing pass to the outside. Yeah. But uh, tonight's timeout sponsor is Metzger Financial Service, helping you plan your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. So Solomon's in the gun. He's got Lehman in the backfield. He's got two to the left, two to the right. He's going to hand the ball to Lehman, and, and Lehman is just going to be swarmed under. And he did not even get back to the line of scrimmage. So kind of curious on that play. I know they're trying to get Lehman out in, in space, but you're down 17 to nothing with 538 to go. Yeah, I think they went a little misdirection. Shawnee wasn't having any of it. No. They, were, they were all there. They had a meeting at... Uh, a meeting at the quarterback. At uh, number 17's That's house, right. apparently. Sullivan's got the ball. He looks across the middle. He swings it out to the right side. His intended target was Lehman, but it goes off his hands. And that's going to bring up a third down. Clock stops with 5.22 to go. Yeah, Lehman just walks off the field, not happy. So 
a new 50-50 ticket. Did you hear that from the PA announced? Somebody's going to win a lot of money. Yeah, there, I, <laughs> I thought I had heard earlier it was around $500. Oh, oh but, I can uh, imagine that because we got a huge crowd on yeah, tap tonight. Might so, be more. Sullivan's in the gun. He's going to hand the ball off. Get off to the left side. He's got some running room out there. This is number 27. He's going to break some tackles. He's trying to get to the end zone, and he's going to be taken down at about the 32-yard line. That's number 27 for number two? 22. 22, number 22 for the Wildcats. Keaton Vernon. Goodness. Yeah, I, I, I can't see anything out here tonight. It's explosive. Yeah. I liked it. Solomon's in the gun. He takes the ball around to the right side. It's shoestring tackle, and he's going to be taken down about the 25-yard line with 4.55 to go here. They're going to bring about six and they're second and seven. Desperately trying to get into the end zone, get some momentum here. Well, you know, anything can happen, but, uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to see Bath be able to capitalize on a good drive here. I think it would be really good for their ego and for their team sure, and sure. for their morale and all that. I, I feel like... Shawnee has a pretty good chance to win this game, even if Bath scores. Ball goes up and looks like they're going to try to go to the end zone. It's just off the fingertips, and he was out of bounds. And they've got number eight, Zach Welsh, in at quarterback right now for the Wildcats. That was Welsh on that throw. Yeah, we've had, yeah, we've had a couple miscommunications in yeah. the backfield and a couple plays that didn't work so well. And I, I don't know if something happened. Yeah, and I don't know to where Sullivan or, Kane or what, Sullivan but, is. I haven't seen him. I just saw Welsh come in the game yeah. and he makes that pass. And let's see who's, yeah, it's, it's, it's Welch is in the game right now at the quarterback position. Yeah, so we have both teams now have their second team quarterback. Welch is in the gun. He looks across the field and there's a flag down. False start. I didn't see Kane Sullivan go out of the game. I did not see him. I don't see him on the sidelines over there. Of course, that's a long way from here. Yeah, um, he, and he's not he's coming not in. That yeah. was uh, number 22, Keaton Vernon just came in the game. but And now we have uh, number one, Logan Markley. He's a freshman. My goodness. He's got to be so pumped. You know, oh, when you're a freshman, last year you play in junior high. Now and this year in the WBL you're out clash. here <laughs> on the turf, man, on Friday night under the lights. Oh, what a throw for that young yes. man. Here's Welch That's in the awesome. gun. Looks across the field, scrambles. He's under a little pressure, gets it out. He's got his man out there at the 20. He gets to the 15, to the 10, and he's taken down. That's my big play guy again, number 22, Keaton Vernon. Keaton he's made Vernon. two yes, really has. big plays on this drive. And again, Bath is moving the football as long as they don't commit a penalty here. They're having right. success. Absolutely. They've done that all night. They've always just shot themselves in the foot. And let's see if they can cap this off. 3.57 to go here in the fourth quarter. Shawnee leads 17 to nothing. Welch still in the game at quarterback. He's in the gun. He's got Vernon in the backfield with him. Two to the left, two to the right. Welch takes the snap, drops it, picks it back up, looks across the field. He's under heavy pressure. He's going to run it himself. He's getting out to the 10, to the 8, to the 7, almost to the 5-yard line where he's taken out of bounds. Well, and he made, he made something out of nothing. He sure did. I mean, picked up about 7 yards, 6 yards there on really nothing on a, on a kind of a low snap. And now they're inside the 10, well inside the red zone. <clears throat> Three minutes and 30 seconds, 39 seconds to go. Down 17 to nothing, trying to get into the end zone. It would be their first points of the year, Scott, as they were shut out last week. So here's Vernon with the ball here's in the Vernon. middle. He's gonna take it up and he's gonna get into the end zone. That's a Bath Wildcat touchdown. Our touchdown sponsor tonight is Fat Jack's Pizza. Keep to Fat Jack's Pizza before and after the game and enjoy their delicious pizza, fun games, and ice cold drinks. Keaton Vernon, three big plays he on did. this drive. He had the big long play earlier. Uh, he just had the, the run play before that, which was about uh, 12 yards to get the first down, and now he puts it in the end zone. I really like his effort Absolutely. this last series for sure. So they bring in the backup quarterback, and Welch leads a drive down the field as they get in the end zone to make it 17-6. Point after try coming up next. Snap is back, hold is good, kick is up, and it is good. It makes it 17-7 to 7 on the Web Insurance scoreboard. 
we Can come I? back, go ahead, Scott. No, that's okay, go. When we come back, we'll have 335 remaining. The Shawnee Indians lead 17 to seven here on WOSN. Back here at Shawnee High School, where the Bath Wildcats put seven on the board. And consider that, the Keaton Vernon drive, Scott. He was fantastic on that drive. Okay, it's not a long drive home to Bath. Sure. From Shawnee, but it's going to make that drive a whole lot oh, better yeah. going home to know they hung, you know, a yeah, touchdown on the board. Uh, it's a 10-point game, and, um, you know. Here comes the onside There's kick. a little bit of pride. And Shawnee does a great job of holding on to that. And they'll get it at about the 44-yard line where they'll take over. And it's been a perfect weather tonight. Uh, I thought we were going to have a little rain earlier today. And, you know, it's just been great weather. Probably the only guy wearing gloves tonight is Craig Samantinger He's a, <laughs> as a referee. He, <laughs> he wears gloves because his fingers get cold. Well, but, it's not. <laughs> you know, other than that. Uh, I'm sure he'll appreciate you mentioning that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So the Indians will bring the ball up with 3.33 to go here. Shawnee leads 17 to nothing. Danny Holbrook, Scott Nurse from Shawnee High School. Indians will run Jordan Banks up the middle. There goes Banks, and he just about gets through, and he gets another Union Bank first down. Jordan Banks squeezes through there and just explodes through the line. Yeah, and they stayed with Caleb Bacon, which I like. Yeah. Give the give the sure. second, give, give him another series to see what happens. You know, he's, he's got the uh, adrenaline out of him sure. now, and, and now it's just, uh, you know, playing football. And plus, you got Jordan Banks. Sure, and that clock. You know? Yeah, they're, they're having some issues with the clock there. Uh, coaching staff looking up, telling them to keep that clock running. <laughs> he says it's sticky. He says it's sticky. You know. This is great. <laughs> yeah. This is good theater for TV. <laughs> oh, the, the announcer says over the loudspeaker it's malfunctioning. <laughs> We've got drama. Uh, it is a new scoreboard, so there may be some, you know, challenges with, uh, you know, working the bugs sure. out. Absolutely. But uh, it, it's such a nice facility. Oh, this is beautiful you know, out here. It, it really is. So Bacon will stay in the game for the Indians, and uh, and Lynch is on the sideline with the coaching staff, um, and he does not appear to be hurt. He's got his helmet off, but they're going to stay with Bacon, and this is Beery. He's going to run it up there, and uh, nice punch. They got a really nice one-two punch with uh, with Banks and, and Beery, you know. Yeah, they do. They got uh, you know a lot to build on. I think both of these teams have a lot to build on. It's only week two, so a lot of things can happen. Absolutely. You know. And we've got two of the coolest names in the WBL in, in Joey Spiker and Vinny Vendetta. Yeah. And it doesn't get any better than that for yeah. high school football. Yeah, for sure. So 2.15 to go here. Shawnee leads 17 to 7. Second and nine <clears throat> from about the 41-yard line. Bacon under center. He's got Banks in the backfield. He's got one to the right, one to the left. He's going to hand the ball up to Beery. This is Beery off the right side. He's going to go down for a gain of about two yards, but that clock is going to continue running. 154 to go. Stick around after the game. We'll try to get down to the field and get the winning coach and get an interview and see what he has to say. But it looks like right now we're going to get another timeout. We'll take our final timeout of the night with 148 to go and Shawnee leading 17-7. You're watching high school football right here on WOSN.
Take the knees for the final time. 